Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Zhou, the floor is yours. Uh, we don't hear you. Uh, we uh, there is a problem with uh, with uh, sound it seems so um, if uh, if uh, okay I hope it's fine So after after the welcoming remarks, I would like everyone also to request everyone to, to open your cameras so we so we can take a picture of everyone. Uh, Mr. Zhou. Mr. Zhou. Yeah. Something wrong with his microphone. Yes, I seem it seems so. Oh, what's his chance name? I don't know. Please Mr. check your Zou, volume. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Zhou so just texted me that he uh there might be something wrong with his microphone, but he that he just tested it, it works fine. So he's trying to figure out what what what's the problem with uh with the sound system okay it always happens yeah apparently he can't hear any of us so uh so我感觉您没有连接麦克风就没有连接您可能退出再重新进一次再进的时候有一个选麦克风的一个环节就选电脑的麦克风 um so uh, while Mr. Zo is trying to fix his microphone, uh I hear he is coming back again. <sighs> Mr. Zo? I guess he is trying to log in. No, he is connected. Uh, can you can you hear me anyone? Yes, now we hear okay, you. Okay, good. Yes, <laughs> right. perfect. Okay, sorry for uh, for uh, miss malfunction, uh, malfunction of my device, and, and sorry for that. And I don't know uh, what the program is going on, so just listen to you, uh, Doctor uh, Kikumova, and, and and very good to see you again. Yes, indeed. Online. <laughs> Uh, so the floor is yours for the welcoming remarks. Okay. Please go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, thank you uh, very much. And I would like to, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, uh, NSFC, uh, uh, welcome all of you to join the uh, workshop for uh, grantees. Uh, uh, with the, uh, I know that you, uh, some, some researchers from Chile and China are the grantees uh, from the uh, uh, joint research program co-financed by the Agency for the uh, uh, Research and Development of Chile and uh, uh, National Natural Science Foundation <coughs> China. And I'm very glad to see uh, some old friends from ANID. And I do know that, yeah, that, that's very exciting. And I do know that you have made a lot of effort and making your contribution to the bilateral uh, 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 partnership between the two uh, funding organizations and also made a lot of effort to support the uh, Chilean researchers and the Chinese counterparts to come together to uh, make their substantial uh, joint research program. And uh, I know that due to the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and we are not able to see 
in person, uh, it's really a pity and hoping that could be made not long after. And I can share with you all is that uh, the cases uh, in China is getting down uh, recently and uh, we are in fact uh, doing our best to ease the restriction and uh, uh, something negative caused by COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, I think we all know uh, the uh, importance of uh, uh, the workshop, uh, such as the one that we have today, uh, because uh, I, I'm very proud of to see that in the past years, uh, together with ANID, NSFC had uh, had the support a series of uh, joint workshops with the participation of Chilean scientists and they are Chinese partners. And uh, the thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, just uh, with the help of those workshop, joint workshop, and uh, with the help from ANID, and we have uh, uh, launched two rounds of uh, uh, solicitation. And uh, all the participants, from Chile and China today to the workshop are the guarantees of the uh, program co-financed by ANID and NSFC. So that's why I am saying that it's very important to support some workshops for the people from different countries so that they could have um, opportunities to know each other, in particular, uh, to offer them with the opportunities for them to explore the possible opportunity for them to make further collaboration. So that's what we want to see. And that's what I want to see. And uh, uh, very excited, uh, very exciting things that uh, uh, in the past uh, two rounds of solicitation, a number of programs have been funded by ANID and NSFC. And some of them are going very well. And uh, we, I think colleagues from ANID and also uh, those from uh, NSFC would very much like to see that uh, all the program that, that are funded by ANID and NSFC could be going very well uh, in line with the, uh, with the goals. Uh, and one of the reason for uh, holding such kind of uh, discussion or meetings that uh, well, we just want to, uh, uh, to, to uh, establish the kind of a platform on which the researchers from both sides can exchange their idea to share the progress they have been making and what they want to do in the next step. And in particular, what kind of uh, uh, support they would like to have from uh, science funding agencies like ANID and NSFC. And I, uh, I just want to say that uh, in the uh, near future, NSFC uh, together with its international uh, uh, counterparts, uh, including ANID, would like to uh, support more uh, joint workshop like the one that we are having today and so that more opportunities will be uh, offered to the scientists and the researchers from uh, uh, different countries. Uh, that, uh, uh, in fact, we have been doing that for more than 35 years since it's uh, uh, NSFC's uh, establishment uh, 36 years ago. And we will uh, uh, do that uh, in the coming years. Uh, so uh, again, uh, I would like to take, take, take this opportunity to thank colleagues from ANID to uh, get uh, uh, today's event possible and thank all the uh, speakers and uh, researchers from uh, Chile and China for your involvement and contribution and uh, really uh, hope to see that more uh, research outcomes, in particular, some, some something very innovative will be attained in the coming years during your uh, uh, collaborative research activities. Uh, so uh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to conclude my uh, remarks uh, uh, by wishing uh, everyone to the meeting a very pleasant time. So thank you very much for your attention. So back to you, uh, uh, Shapapia. Ah, thank you very much for your words. Um, before we go to our first presentation, I would mm -hmm. like everyone to put on your cameras, to switch on your cameras so we can take some photos. Um, uh, so yeah, that is a must. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we must do that. <laughs> yes, surely. You put good, your good, smile on your face also and we <laughs> take our photo. <laughs> Cheers. And one more. <laughs> Great. I love the photo. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So um, uh, now we are going to our first presentations. Uh, as I mentioned, please uh, switch off your mics if you are not talking, uh, so not to, in to interrupt. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go to Dr. Min Chen Chen from the Institute of Mountain Hazard and Environmental Chinese Academy from a Chinese Academy of Science, and also Dr. Marcelo Somos Valenzuela from University of Frontera. So we are going to our first project. Thank you. Remember, you have a 10 minutes. Uh, when the time is eight minutes, I will raise my hand uh, on screen. So please uh, make sure that it's or if uh, you are divided, your presentation will be Yes. Can anyone see? Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. OK. I, on on yes, behalf yes, we of our project, uh, I'm Chinese PI, and our chair of PI is Marcelo Thomas Valenzuela. We cooperate research the cascade landslide model flow has as a risk based resilient elevation across different scales. We have four parts to introduce our research Chinese side. As you know, in China and Chow, there are so many job in everywhere, especially in the mountain area. So our project is cooperated by IMHE, Chinese Academy of Science, and also University of La Frontera uh, from Chiao, and also Kunming University of Science and Technology. We have, uh, because of the virus, so we have to do some regular joint conference and to exchange some idea every, every few months so we can share our idea very, very effectively. Based on our research, we have published 20, in Chinese side, 20 essay publication, seven patents for imaging, five consulting reports for government. So here is the 20 essay papers, and 30% of all the paper is the cooperative publication. We have two uh, fi finished seven patents for invitation from uh, in a, our research period. And we also honored with Chinese Academy of Science Promotion and Development Award in 2019. We also get the top 10 scientific and technology progress in China, China, China's ecology environment in 2019. So we have a five consulting reports were, were instructed by national leaders and leaders of Sichuan province. As you know, also Xinhai province. And one, uh, two of the reports are, are accepted by Vice Prime Minister of China about a, has a, has a, uh, a reduction. Our next part, I try to introduce research summary. First part is uh, we finish the mechanism of the delay and slide is a long off confluence and infiltration process for the landslide sliding phase. As you know, in China, here is one case of landslide uh, and depth flow. The landslide transforming the depth flow uh, uh, kill four people. Why? Because after the rain stop, the depth flow is coming at a at the midnight 3.30, but 
but at that time, rain is stopped. So that means, that means the depth flow come from, uh, comes later, uh, later, three, three hours and 30 minutes of the landslide. The mechanism is the, is the landslide have a long process because of the long of infiltration into the landslide phases. Here's another case of delayed landslide of the, of the heavy rains. You know, in 2020, there is a landslide delay about two days, about two days. Why? Because also the long of, long of infiltration in infiltrated into the landslide phases. There's a long process. We also find in some cases in 2017, there's a one depth flow, 24 pe 25 people died because, because in summer it's very dry. The drought after rainfall trigger a landslide depth flow. And we also find in a transboundary river in Port Cossey, there's one, there's one case is a, is a glove hazard. The small glove in a very big disaster. And that's a, for, for the cause uh, the, the hydropower plant are destroyed and lost so much. Because it, we find the mechanism is a landslide, the earthquake induced landslide block and increase landslide uh, uh, the depth flow uh, scale. So we also find the resilient elevation model based on dynamic risk assessment and also poverty assessment and stepwise warning. We also use our research result we find in Botocosi, the river cut rate is 11.5 millimeters one year. Based on our research, supported the hazards, the disaster, the landslide, the thermal landslide uh, control work. And our, uh, based on our research, we prediction the risk of geohazards every year uh, in three years of China. So uh, we suggest this year we do more research on the, on the mechanism of and um, process of depth flow and growth and also landslide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, so. Uh, we don't hear you. Okay, now. Now it's okay. Um, okay, thank you. Um, well, I have three minutes. Uh, I, I want to just mention some of the outcomes that we um, propose for this project. We basically have, um, we propose having new monitoring capacities, uh, develop a, a lot of, um, work hard on developing new human capital to to be able to translate this information to to stakeholders create new knowledge on our cascade events and of course to this joint research um as, as you might know now the, the project was about landslides related to uh different um um cascade events uh in this case we're showing a, a, a very small landslide that happened in patagonia but it, 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 it took uh, some life there. So these are very random events that are triggered by earthquake, extreme weather events, or volcanic eruptions in Patagonia. Um, and Patagonia in particular is a very reactive lands, uh, landscape. And we have a, a very different situation than in uh, China, where the, the, the events generally are very large. In, in Chile, they're very small. So we have this uh, issue about scales when we try to translate the information. So in new monitor capacities, one of the things that we realized in Chile that we don't really have good data to do this work. So we have to start from, from uh, we, we have an assumption that we did have some data to do this work. So when we realized we didn't have that, we had to build the information. So we use some artificial intelligence algorithm to do some um, remote sensing identification of plant size to produce databases. Um, for the, human 
capacity we, in the Chilean side, we have at least 15 students working in this project. Six, six of them there did their final project on the um, um, on, on the project. Uh, we are having we have three master's students finishing this year. We didn't have much success with PhD students because of the location of uh, uh, because of the timing wasn't correct, and then we had COVID, so it was very difficult. And we have several presentations, AGU, EGU, Suchikri, and with local stakeholders um, and international seminars where we, uh, where we discuss information. For the new knowledge, we study um, the effects of atmospheric rivers in this chain process. Here we have shown an event where 22 people were killed in the south of Chile. Um, we also use, um, um, we study uh, this chain of events in volcanic context. And we use our artificial intelligence to understand the variables that control the landslides in Patagonia. We have the papers to, to show that work. And, and also the, the evaluation of this special, special uh, susceptibility to inform the locals to how they can adapt to this uh, event. Uh, now we have uh, uh, in preparation some uh, work related to post uh, earthquake event in, in, in Chile, which is very important because we are in a very seismic area. And um, for the database, we produce uh, um, a database for, with more than 400 uh, gloves uh, that happen in America and, and Asia. And this um, is information that we will have for the future work. I saw your hand, Sharapia. And, um, and also, uh, and this is a very important work that we did. And I think this is the most valuable part that we create this uh, database with more than 10,000 landslides in Chile, which we didn't have before. So now we can train models to do this work. Uh, we have regular meetings, although WeChat is the way to communicate with our uh, partners um, in China because of the time change. Uh, we have an annual um, seminar where we present the work, but we have regular meetings. Uh, we organize uh, a conference with uh, Chilean society here. Uh, we jointly, we publish eight uh, Q1 journal papers and we have about uh, three under revisions. And, um, and now we're st we start uh, discussing how to look for new fundings in particular with GloveRix evolution in developing countries and how to use deep learning algorithm for prediction. Um, thank you. Uh, that's a very short and quick presentation. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for, for seeing my hand as well. So yeah. uh, we go to the next presentation. We, uh, we will have a time to discussion. So if you have your questions, you can probably post them on the chat. Or you uh, and then the researchers can also respond on the chat for particular questions. But otherwise, we will have a discussion slot uh, on the second half of the uh, of our workshop. So now I will go to Diana Compe from the University of Chile and Jan Chu Jeng from Wuhan Wuhan University. Thank you. Yeah. Please stop me when I reach five minutes. Okay, um, this, okay, this is a project related with the seismicity and obviously the seismic and geodetic um, analysis of a huge amount of data. Uh, I am Diana Comte from University of Chile and also is here with us Francisco Ortega and we are, we are working with the Wuhan University and the University of Science and Technology of uh, China. This is uh, the main people that work with us. This is myself, this is Francisco. Andrea is a PhD student that started to work in this project. And after that, uh, she obtained a, a fellowship, a PhD fellowship. And Sergio, Sergio Leone is a postdoc that we have in the project. And now uh, he also obtained a postdoc uh, fellowship. We also work with a um, master in geophysics. We have another a PhD student that finished in 2021. And here is another uh, um, master student. And also here is <coughs> other researcher of this uh, project. Okay, Chile has a huge amount of seismicity and also a large amount of data that we share with our counterpart. And uh, this is the seismicity that we share. And with this, uh, um, a 3D um, the velocity model in the um, whole country was, uh, where, uh, was developed. 
and in particular the northern part uh, that is uh, this is seismicity with the red and blue dots but in northern Chile we had a larger amount of data and it results in a joint project this is the <coughs> the um, authors and this was published in the Earthquake Research Advances. I will share this presentation with all of you. And this is one uh, paper. We also, the Andrea, uh, the PhD student, uh, recently, uh, the previous one was in, in 2021. Oh, uh, yes, I uh, this. And uh, this one was recently uh, published with Andrea. And it all of them are related with uh, some detailed um, behavior of the subducting plate. In, in the previous case, we had here a double seismic zone in northern Chile that was previously uh, observed, but in this work, it was a, a more a detailed um, behavior of the uh, slab. And we also have here um, the next three slides are related with the GPS and the geodetic uh, research, all of them joined with um, our counterpart. This is accepted uh, recently. Also this one uh, led by Francisco and the counterpart, uh, this is related with the Iyapel earthquake. And uh, the last one is uh, related with the real-time seismic geodesy integrating the GNSS and the strong motions uh, data. Uh, this is an ongoing um, paper that we are working related with the, uh, this is an application of your statistical simulation uh, related with the um, potential seismicity associated with the um, crustal uh, fault system that is in Northern, that are in Northern Chile. And this is what we are have now. This is a numerical uh, model related with the distance of the shallow crustal earthquake to the fault system that we have in Northern Chile. We also need to finish the, this part of the research and we hope to do this during this last year because this is the last year uh, of this project. Uh, we only have the opportunity of having a face-to-face -face meeting. It was in 2019 in uh, American Geophysical Union Fall meeting. Uh, it was a great time, but at that time we didn't know or it was not clear how the COVID situation was developed. I think that the main challenges of this uh, project and in general is one related with the uh, pandemic and there were, there were no possibility to have visits from China and to China. And, and the other thing that I think that is important is the uh, time difference between Chile and China. And we, we were not also during these uh, years uh, to do a lot of outreach activities. And this is something like we developed in this um, project for outreach. This is a mock-up where we can show the uh, seismic tomography and the uh, seismic stations. It's a 3D um, mock-up. And I hope to be on time. That's it. Thank you. Oh. So, uh, please go ahead. OK, wait, because wait. I, yes, stop share. All right, could you, OK. Uh, let me see, how can I uh, share screen? All right. Okay, everyone, could you see my slides here? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Yes, we okay, do. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here to present my uh, uh, our advances in the joint project between Wuhan University and the University of Chile. So I'm the Chinese PI uh, from Wuhan University, Zhang Huigong. And uh, from the title of this project, we can know that we are using uh, both the ge geodetic and the seismic technologies to improve our, our understanding of the, of the seismic zone in Chile, uh, in Chile areas and to improve their resistance uh, to some earthquake disasters. 
So my talk will be divided into three parts. The first one is the research content divided into six parts. And the second one is how we uh, cooperate, cooperated in the past uh, three years, three online meetings and, uh, and the emails because of the pandemic situation. And the final one is our research achievements uh, in uh, joint presentations and joint articles published in the high profile uh, uh, venues. Uh, the first part is uh, uh, the, the whole project is divided into uh, six parts and uh, we have the University of Science and Technology in China to, to, take, part, uh, to take part in the seismic part. That is, uh, they are using the seismic data, traditional seismic data to derive the uh, seismic tomography and earthquake locations in, in the Chile subduction zones. And uh, this data will be supplemented into the, into the uh, research efforts of Wuhan University, uh, which is focused on the geodetic, uh, geodetic techniques to improve our uh, understanding of the crustal deformations in the Chile subduction zones. So we have actually uh, two parties to be involved in the uh, research, uh, joint research efforts in China. And uh, uh, this is the cooperation plan that we have in the past three years. And uh, Chilean, the Chilean guys uh, is going to provide to the data, uh, some solid data support, including hybrid genesis data, as well as the seismic waveforms of the past, of the past uh, 20 or 30 years. And uh, they also have very solid ge uh, geological background, which can, uh, can really help us to understand the uh, the theoretical uh, 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 theoretical uh, information uh, behind the subduction zones in Chile, and the Chinese party, we have the, we can provide very very advanced uh, software to uh, to invert for uh, to invert the data, seismic data and the genetic data, and we can also combine the genesis and the inside data to produce a three D deformation uh, map for the whole uh, for the entire Chile areas. So we can then combine both of them. And finally, we have the uh, seismic, seismic tomography of the subduction zones. And we can also use the uh, most of the advanced the hybrid, hybrid genesis data as well as the INSA images to, to do the geodetic inversion and to, to solidate our, consolidate our understanding of the focal mechanism and as well as the characterization of the cross deformation after, uh, especially during the early, very early post-seismic periods. Right, because of the pandemic situation over the past three years, so we have to communicate between uh, among us using some uh, online online meeting tools such as Zoom, and we use email uh, to communicate frequently, and we share our data and we share our results as well. And we also uh, uh, use our software to install our software in the in the, in the Chilean servers to provide some real time monitoring of the genesis data processing. And we have a very fruitful discussion that we have finally achieved very, uh, very great collaboration results. So here, this is a timeline of the past three years. And in, uh, in the year of 20, uh, 2019, we have started the project and we uh, meet in the, in the USA for the AG meeting and we jointly uh, present something together. And uh, over, the past, over, the, over the following three years, we uh, have uh, uh, two or three meetings per year to, have, uh, to exchange our views of the progress of the project. And then we, uh, we have joined the presentation in some online meetings as well. So here, this is the output of the project and all progresses uh, were presented and discussed at the meeting and revised before publication. So we have uh, several uh, high profile journals publications, including GRL, which is one of the most uh, highly reputated uh, journals in the, in the geophysics. And we have even some papers on uh, nature communications uh, uh, based on our research efforts. Uh, here, this is the first one that we have signed a, a, an agreement with the Chilean party to have our instruments to be, uh, to be installed in Chile to monitor the uh, real-time uh, earthquake motions caused by, by some kind of tsunami waves. And uh, uh, this, is, this instrument is a joint effort between the Chilean, uh, between China, between Wuhan University and the University of Chile and we have uh, we have installed our software in the Chilean service to uh, process their uh, real-time genesis data to, uh, at about 120 stations, and they are producing uh, displacement waveforms, which can be used for earthquake early warning and to improve their resilience against uh, uh, against the tsunami uh, tsunami disasters. Uh, the second one is we are uh, we have just just as mentioned by by, by Dana we have. Co, uh, co published uh, co published a paper on GRL 
uh, which is based on the uh, very uh, on the analysis of the very early uh, for seismic deformation monitored by the high region SS. And we also uh, joined, uh, combined the inside the genus data to provide some more uh, in-depth understanding of the uh, Chilean subduction zone definitions. And this is the geodesy part. And the second one is the seismic achievements. So we use the traditional seismic data and to supplement our understanding of, of the, uh, the subduction zones uh, recovered by, uh, by uh, uncovered by the, uh, by the, uh, by the geodetic data before. And here we, uh, we use the high resolution seismic imaging and earthquake location algorithms in the Chilean subduction zones uh, to have, and we also use the catalog of arrival time in the surface wave dispersion data to pick the P and S wave arrival times to derive some more uh, in a more data pool for our further, uh, further analysis. So this is the result. And we have a fine velocity imaging of the request in Chile by joining the version of body wave and the surface wave data. And we have also the fine scale relocation of focal mechanism determination of earthquakes uh, for the subduction zone of Chile. So the, the, this paper is going to be published uh, soon in, the, in, in this summer. Oh, okay, finally, we have, we have jointly published about 15 papers and six of them are the first mark paper by uh, and, and, and founded by the NSFC. And we have papers published in, in, in Nature Communication, GRL and the JGR. And we also have a monograph uh, published by Al Spear, which is on Genesis Seismic Geodesy and which is based on the instrument that we developed uh, for the combination of Genesis data and uh, seismic data. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just to uh, make sure I will change my strategy. Uh, the hand uh, will be working after four minutes if the presentation is separate four minutes after the presentation I will raise my hand. So please try to manage your time. Um, I understand it is very short time but uh, because we have a lot of projects that's why we would like to, to make sure that uh, especially our Chinese colleagues uh, don't stay so late. So next uh, um, the presentation is for Luis Robledo from the University of Andres Bello and Ching Ling Liu from the College of Environment and Resources from Fuzhou University. The floor is yours. Just one second, okay, uh, sorry. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, present, do you hear me? We yeah. don't, we hear you, but we don't see your presentation. Yeah, you don't, sorry. Okay. Now we should. Yes, now we oh, Okay, all right, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with everybody. Um, uh, we have, uh, working with landslides, our main objective has been uh, working with the uh, uh, typhoon and raystorm triggered landslides. Uh, for this uh, research uh, agreement and study, we have been uh, working in some particular parts of Chile, and we had the chance to uh, see and uh, uh, inspect the Chinese side of this uh, problem. Uh, this uh, Research has been focusing on a building an early warning system that works with within this uh, scope with these dealing restrictions, and this early warning system has been a resolutely blank in, in in both countries. There are no further uh, specific studies for this. Uh, all early warning systems have been related to uh, earthquakes and uh, tsunamis and things like that. Therefore, we. Uh, Thing that was uh, necessary to, to to focus on this, so we focused on a low re high reliability regional multilevel early warning system, which will be uh, monitoring and predicting uh, these uh, events, uh, dissemination of information, and uh, and response. How we we work on this? We have been doing, developing several sustainability studies in battery maps. We have been uh, working with uh, meteorological studies, uh, historical data, and up-to-date and real-time data. And we have been working with input and event prediction to test better structure, what we are working right now. Uh, among these, uh, I'm not going to go uh, any so much deeper for the time. So 
constraints, of course, but uh, these uh, mainly have been a, a good experience for us since we start first a little bit uh, time and, and static. We moved uh, because of the several situations to a more agile model, uh, including drone and um, satellite image analysis for as an input model for our, our as an input uh, data for our models. Um, of course, we uh, include all the historical and um, factual relations for, for these prediction models. Um, and we, we are now in the phase of uh, algorithm and pretesting uh, characteristics in order to uh, give us a forecasting and warning system. Uh, we include a surface risk analysis and a special statistic for this. Or um, in data acquisition, uh, we have been uh, we have a great uh, experience in, in uh, automatic data collection, and we have been able to uh, trigger and to uh, isolate some contributing factor analysis, which will you know, fit our our model. And this have a, a spread on to another topics like, uh, for instance, uh, precipitation threshold wasting uh, and uh, in, in, in even a social. Uh, uh, activities that are related or are influenced by these uh, disasters. Our research collaboration and student participation have included international workshops in 2000 in, in last year and in a visit that we, we had to uh, uh, to China. We have had uh, international and national presentations here in, in Chile and abroad, even in, in Turkey last year, shared publications, and we have uh, had a lot of uh, graduate and undergraduate students working with this which are no, no uh, ending their publications. Um, the next steps will be continuing research approach with different types of terrain and climate zones, which implies a variable enhancement, uh, hybrid model enhancement, um, a climate change population analysis for heavy rainstorm, and of course, um, uh, according to the restriction of uh, terrain and weather conditions between China and Chile. Okay, uh, this is my very brief presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis. Yeah, okay. King, King Lo, you, you are up to, you, you should go down, King, King Lo, sorry. Uh, all right. Yeah, we can see it. Go ahead. Uh, on behalf of um, Professor uh, Wen Bing Chen, and uh, the topic for this presentation um, is about the development of multi level early warning system uh, from typhoon, uh, rainstorm to landsliders. And this is an outline of our research topic uh, presentation. And the review on the approved research proposal from the Chinese side. And uh, the next part is the exchange and the collaboration between. Uh, Fuzhou University and Andrews Perry University from China, and uh, some research outputs uh, from Chinese side and future research cooperation plan and acknowledgement. And uh, uh, this slide shows the review on the pro approved research proposal. And uh, this project lasted from 2018 to 20 2022. And we, uh, the most important, we focus on the research work on the early warning models, uh, including the slow failure prediction and real time warning model for a single underslide and the slow probabilistic failure prediction for regional landsliders. And uh, this is some um, exchange and collaboration between uh, Fuzhou University and Aerospero University in China. And, uh, um, these pictures show the visit, uh, the visit uh, in Fuzhou University and the Chinese Academy of Science in Chantou uh, in 2019. And uh, um, we also visit Anxi County. Uh, it's a famous disaster site. And, uh, um, and this is short online workshop exchange activities uh, in the year 2020 and in the year 2020 with the reason of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, um, the search collabor research collaboration outputs and four uh, papers have been published 
It included the topic collab behavior uh, on satellite remote granular seed soil and some uh, useful models to uh, to uh, to the to the morning warning early warning system. And uh, on this part, we have a, a brief introduction of a research uh, output from Chinese site. Um, we have 17 papers, publications, and uh, four authorized patents, and one academic work, and uh, seven authorized software light, and uh, two real time monitoring stations for typhoon rainstorm trigger landsliders. And uh, the most important is a multi level warning system. We have a uh, compared to the construction. It's a seven, uh, 17 paper publications, and uh, it also includes a rainfall infiltration model uh, based on in situ test and into the our uh, time scale response patterns of a typhoon uh, rainfall. And uh, let's show the mechanics on land slide trigger by um, typhoon or rainstorm. It, it combines the on site geologic survey data to expert. Establish a landslide physical and a numeric model, and to some the landslide deformation evolution process. Um, this is the basic work to the early warning system, and is also very useful. And this show the fast prediction of slow groundwater level of fluctuation triggered by a rainstorm. We uh, introduced the sliding window algorithm, and this also is effective. And there's a problem. Ability analysis analysis of land slide based on the typhoon uh, track and for also lines of patterns. And one academic work and uh, uh, seven also lies software well called light. Um, and this academic work is about the research on the response and the uh, failing process uh, on saturated soil slope under rainfall infiltration, uh, which is published in 2020. Um, we also uh, have a construction work um, to site real-time monitoring stations for typhoon rainstorm trigger the landslide. And this is picture of show the monitoring station in Anxi County, uh, Fujian province. And this is the second monitoring station we, 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 we have and in monitoring station in Yantou, uh, Fujian province. Um, and we introduced found some very useful uh, uh, color sensors like a uh, water contact sensor and uh, electrical conductivity center. Um, the next is an introduction about multi-level warning system. Um, it's, it's very, uh, it's and this early warning system is developing regional and the multi-level early warning landslide system. Um, it's also uh, have a theoretical and practical significance for disaster prevention and mitigation. So type and restore trigger land sliders. Um, it's uh, it's um, the main, um, it's have a, the multi-source data modeling network and the multi-source data. And uh, the, it's a new low cost monitor equipment yeah. and uh, the, the warning, the warning level, including the four levels, and the first and second, the third and the fourth. It's also a point to surface the warning model. And it's some a functions of the platform on the basic data displaying the monitoring station warning and the lightness and decision support. Uh, and it's also data publishing and receive display. And it's also the partial function displays. Uh, so <clears throat> it's a, and this early warning system, in, I, it can be linked to China and the channel uh, through the internet, and it's also uh, useful. So uh, for the next, uh, for the future research cooperation plan, um, and collaborate, collaborative study on the gen genesis mechanism or secondary geological disasters are produced by earthquakes as well as the technologies important to mitigate them. And uh, the background is China is one of the world's most seismically active countries by China insisting on the eastern coast of South Pacific Ocean. I mean, intersection of the Pacific Plate and the Nazca Plate and is one of the world's most earthquake prone countries. So earthquakes frequently cause secondary geological disasters and the China and China can 
collaborate on additional study into the mechanism that caused secondary geological disaster injured by earthquake, as well as the technologies that can be used to mitigate land natural catastrophes. And the second fearless cooperation plan, and we say that a build inter continental and the trans ocean make real time monitoring and simulation systems. And we continue to optimize our multi level early warning systems, optimize the UI interface, underlying architecture, and overall system efficiency in purpose to uh, internet trailing data and models into the database to build them intercontinental and trans ocean time, real time uh, monitoring and the simulation system and the uh, uh, corporate research on the prediction risk assessment of typhoon event and the mighty geology as hazards in the context of intensify uh, global climate changes, extreme weather events. And uh, the last part is um, uh, acknowledgement. And we would like to acknowledge the fund support from the SFC, International Corporation and Exchange Project. And according to the study plan, upon the findings in the field of multi-level early warning system um, for typhoon rainstorm geo landslide have been achieved. A defined research plan has been accomplished thanks to the joint effort by China and Fuji University and Chile Andrews Barrett University. And that is our that's our presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are having now presentation of the last uh, projects of the 2018 year. Um, and uh, before we go to this presentation, I would like to uh, say our condolences to the teams of this project because uh, the PI of the project, Jorge Pessoa, passed away recently. And uh, I really appreciate the team of, uh, of this project, especially to come up and to present today. So, um, Felipe Lamas from University of Concepcion and uh, Chen Shi Tan from the Harbin University of Institute of Technology. The floor is yours. And uh, good morning and good evening to everybody. Uh, I'm Da Gan Lu. Uh, so, I, uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Tan, I will give the presentation. Um, uh, this project uh, actually uh, have uh, four uh, tasks. Uh, the first one is the sensor self uh, organizing network and the information aggre uh, aggregation method in earthquake areas uh, based on UAV cluster. And the second one is the image uh, construction in earthquake areas with AI method. And the third one is the post uh, earthquake environmental uh, monitoring based on the molecular communication and the nano network. And the last one is the comprehensive evaluation of the post earthquake and the secondary disasters uh, based on the multi source information. Uh, the uh, first two uh, sections are on the information uh, acquisition and the trans uh, transmission. And the last two letters are on the disaster evaluation. <clears throat> and for the first one, uh, we use a number of uh, UAVs uh, to collect the information about the disaster area after uh, earthquake. And the UAV uh, form a 3D uh, ad hoc uh, network. And we propose a three dimensional uh, clustering uh, algorithm for uh, this uh, ad hoc network. And uh, the simulation uh, results have shown that the, uh, our proposed clustering uh, algorithm. Uh, has a, a higher uh, topology stability and uh, transmission reliability than the existing uh, ones. And uh, for the uh, UAV uh, dynamic pass, uh, this is the task uh, allocation problem. Uh, it is uh, basically, uh, it is an optimization uh, model. And we propose the improved immune uh, algorithm and uh, uh, with also uh, with the multi-agent system to solve this uh, NP-hard uh, problem. And the numerical results uh, indicate that our proposed algorithm uh, can outperform the existing uh, immune uh, algorithms. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, propose a, a, a double uh, layer 
uh, UAV structure and also a method based on the maximum communication probability uh, to determine the coverage of the upper UAV to the lower UAV. And that the algorithm is uh, service driven. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, very excellent, uh, has the uh, excellent performance. For the second one, for the uh, panoramic uh, image construction, uh, we propose uh, image uh, day blurring uh, algorithm based on CNN. And also uh, <clears throat> this uh, algorithm can effectively uh, restore the detailed information of the image so as to uh, provide a high quality sharp image uh, for subsequent retrie retrieval and uh, stitching. <clears throat> and for the image uh, retrieval uh, is input to the CNN and then uh, we get the, uh, the image features uh, use the <clears throat> efficient efficient the manifold ranking uh, algorithm to sort the results and then uh, we can get the uh, the best uh, image <clears throat> and finally uh, we propose the improve uh, improved uh, image sedation method based on um, uh, the combination of a multi scale uh, distortion image uh, sedation method and also an uh, image fusion method <clears throat> For the third one, uh, for the uh, molecular uh, communication and uh, nanonetwork, network, we based on the abstract uh, structure of the uh, diffusion-based uh, uh, molecular communication, uh, we, we have uh, three phases, uh, the, for, uh, for example, the emission, the diffusion, and the, the reception. And uh, the information uh, molecular concentra uh, concentration uh, at the receiver is solved by uh, combining the FIC law and also the, 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 the diffusion uh, equations. <clears throat> and then uh, we, we uh, propose three index of the communication, uh, including the, the pass delay, the pass uh, amplitude, and also the pass width. Uh, and uh, also uh, we uh, devised uh, the, the pass based the, the, um, modulation and also with the pass uh, amplitude uh, modulation. <clears throat> Uh, the fourth part is the post earthquake disaster evaluation. Uh, for example, uh, for the regional level or urban level earthquake disaster simulation, we must first build up a city information model, a theme. Uh, basically, it is a combination of a beam and a JIS. And uh, uh, we can build different resolution levels of uh, simulation models for portfolio, uh, for, the, uh, for the portfolio buildings and the bridges, and we choose uh, a university uh, level campus and also another uh, big city, uh, Songyuan city in Jilin province as two uh, case studies. <clears throat> uh, we use the collected UAV uh, image information to build the post uh, earthquake disaster evaluation model. And uh, you know, uh, in 2008, uh, in Wenchuan earthquake, one of the, uh, there is uh, two uh, epicenters, uh, Beichuan, uh, county was seriously uh, damaged. So after the uh, earthquake, the old Beichuan uh, county was kept as a, a earthquake museum. So at this time, we used the UAV to make the uh, oblique uh, photography for the damaged buildings. And then uh, we used the simulation uh, platform, same center and open seas to uh, run the disaster uh, simulation. <clears throat> So you see, uh, this is uh, the oblique uh, photography uh, for the damaged buildings, and we use the CNN uh, algorithm to make the image uh, recognition, uh, recognition of the damaged states of the buildings. And uh, you can see that the identified damaged uh, states are compared with the simulation results. Uh, the accuracy can reach nearly uh, more than 90%. And uh, we also uh, made a comprehensive research on the earthquake-induced secondary uh, disasters, including the fire, uh, landslide, and also the dammed lakes. And uh, for the post-earthquake uh, disaster evaluation and the uh, disaster warning, we have also used the secondary uh, generation uh, uh, performance-based earthquake engineering framework to make the risk and the resilience evaluation. <clears throat> And the uh, uh, ongoing uh, work is uh, also we make the landsliding warning based on the GIS. Okay, uh, in summary, uh, for this project, uh, we have uh, published uh, 14 uh, SCI papers 
and we have get uh, got the three uh, prices uh, in the province level. And also we have uh, 20 uh, patents and we have uh, uh, graduate uh, nearly uh, 30 PhD and master uh, students. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Hello. Yeah, we hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello, I'm Felipe Lamas, an electrical engineering master student from the University of Concepcion. Um, I will present you the Chilean progress in the ANID NSFC International Cooperation Program, named multidimensional mobile information acquisition, transmission, and integrated evaluation methods for earthquake disasters between Harbin Institute of Technology, China and University of Concepcion, Chile. The Chilean group have sustained several achievements such as deploying the 5G network provided by the TAM Technology and Industry Group, research on convolutional neural network for crowd detection, localization and counting, and facial expression recognition systems. In recent years, the Chinese and the Chilean groups have met in many workshops in China framed in the joint project and 5G system deployment training. Despite the pandemic, we also met in the virtual communication technology workshop last year to continue working together. Four engineers have graduated developing their research in our project. Specifically, two of the students work on facial expression recognition systems and the third one, work on a crowd detection system, and the last one, develop a multivariate slope stability analysis. Also, we currently have the contribution of a master student who has published a paper in the SPIE and has attended to Orlando, Florida, USA to present it. On the other hand, we publish an article in IEEE and IEEE that described the implementation of the 5G system in the Chinese Chilean lab Joint Laboratory. The article's name in the IEEE is the Chilean, uh, the China Chile ICT Joint Laboratory and 5G Standalone Network for Education, Innovation, Research and Development, whereas the SPAI uh, article name is Crow Detection and Estimation for an Earthquake Early Warning System Using Deep, Lear deep Learning. <clears throat> To finish our part of the project, we are preparing another two papers and we will carry out the intelligence crowd localization counting system using the 5G network infrastructure in the facilities of the University of Concepcion, which is essential for obtaining the earthquake early warning system. Finally, the authors acknowledge the support of ANID and SFC via the PCI program grant number PII 180009. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for being short and sweet. So now we, we move to the project from 2019 call. And I would like to invite Rodrigo De Marco from Federico Santa Maria Technical University and Dr. Dong, Dong Ping Chen from Beijing Institute of Technology. Okay, those who don't speak, please uh, mute your mics. Thank you. Please go ahead. I I ju I'm just I just heard some background noise. Yeah. But uh, without voice from the uh, okay. Oh, here you are. Dumping. I I think I'm. We are seeing your your screen.
I can see the uh, shared presentation. First, the slides of presentation uh, by Dong Ping, uh, Mr. Chen, and and uh, Fields from from Chilean team. Very first the slide. Dong Ping. Yeah, Dong Dong Ping. Are you there? Yeah, good, okay. Now it's, we don't maybe, hear your voice. Maybe I can share the screen. Uh, okay, okay, Rodrigo, uh, yeah. maybe you can, you can go ahead first and then we check. Uh, Let me see how can I share the screen. Uh, where it is. I love you. Here it is. Okay. Here you go. Okay, don't think I, I, I don't know if you're good to go. Don't think we don't hear you. We can see that yeah. you try to speak. Please uh, say something. Yeah. yeah, can you hear me? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, okay. now yes. Please go ahead. I'm here. I'm here. It, it's, so, so this is not my screen. So uh, Rodrigo, can you, can you stop sharing and I share my stuff? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, sorry for this uh, mess. Okay. No problem. Uh, <laughs> It's what happens. Uh, okay. So Rodrigo, uh, if you don't mind, I will guide you. Okay. So can you hear my voice? Good. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay, next please, please. Okay. Sorry for the mess. This is Dongping, by the way. And uh, for this talk, I will go as quick. And uh, so we will cover a little bit of background and project plan and feature the human. Next page, please. Yeah. So what uh, for this in this talk in this project actually the keyword is we have the jet fuel, we have the biofuel. So what we are targeting is the renewable energy for the uh, air uh, industry. And we try to investigate how those biofuel perform in the combustor and how they uh, yield those soot, which is the particle uh, pollutants in the, uh, in the combustion. So those are the two questions we want to address. Next page, please. Next. Yeah. So for this uh, project, we have a joint uh, team uh, with a Chilean partner. We have, two, uh, we have two university involved in China. One is the BIT, it's Beijing Institute of Technology. And also we have Tianjin University. In China side, in Chinese side, we have total uh, four professors involved and roughly tens of uh, students involved. And in the Chile side, we have the PI and just uh, Fontis and also the co-PI uh, Rodrigo de Marco here and also like a few students. Okay, next page, please. Yeah, for this project actually is divided to I think, I think we lost the connection, maybe. Maybe, Rodrigo, you can go ahead and uh, talk about it. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, meanwhile, Don Ping is probably coming back. Uh, okay, the, the, the main teams, uh, maybe it's coming, yeah. Well, for one side, we have a, uh, uh, like a big deployment of different experiments in terms of uh, the Chinese and also Chilean team. And uh, we chair some of these uh, 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 facilities and also uh, we complement each other with the different tests we're going to, 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 to do. So uh, 
we are working different aspects in terms of uh, the, the study, the flames that produce the soot. So by working with uh, laminar uh, premix flames and also flow reactors, uh, constant volume uh, vessels in order to have uh, uh, information in order to study different aspects of the uh, soot uh, generation. And with this also uh, complemented with all uh, the facilities we have here in Chile. So we study the, the, the force uh, flames in order to see how the, the soot behaves and also laminar normal inverse diffusion flames are, are like a, or, or benchmark uh, type of flame in order to study the different aspects. So uh, by doing this, we try to cover every different aspect of the uh, soot uh, generation and soot formation process. And in this uh, uh, project, we're, we're trying to figure out the, the specific aspects of the jet fuel uh, uh, combustion. So try to see how the planes are uh, going to behave by the introduction of biofuels. So uh, the main aspects of our studies try to figure out if this is going to, for one side, of course, decrease the CO2, but we're not sure about the soot because the soot is a big, uh, a significant aspect in the, the in the uh, climate forcing uh, uh, produced by the, the use of the plane. So the biofuel seems a very good idea, but we need to see if soot is going to have a big issue, a big problem or not. So that's the main idea of the study. And that's why we're developing this experimental and also numerical tools to uh, study the, the soot formation to see and uh, what's the the, the morphological aspects of the soot generation and also uh, the soot uh, uh, production from the different flames and from uh, uh, the different aspects of the combustion. So we're developing also very different and complementary uh, numerical tools to understand what's going on. Don Ping, maybe you are coming back. Things now, so no, you probably so. Rodrigo, you should go. go okay. Ahead. In terms of uh, achievement, where well, we have been very productive, uh, we have several uh, uh, papers, also two patents, and also been awarded with uh, different prizes because uh, uh, the different aspect we are developing in this uh, in this study. So uh, we're very happy with this. And uh, also uh, we continue to, to work on it because it's a very hot uh, topic. And as uh, regulation are going in this direction is going to be a big concern in the future. Don Pink, if your audio is fine, ju please jump in. Yes, I need your help in this part of the presentation. <laughs> Not. <laughs> well, I'm afraid uh, uh, Professor Chen has got experienced uh, this connection during his uh, uh, presentation. So, uh, uh, because of a uh, time constraint, uh, may I suggest that we could move on to the next item, and and then we can, if we have a chance, to, we can ask uh, uh, Professor Chen if there is anything from him to 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 be added. Hey, Rodrigo, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to continue. Uh, well, maybe I can explain a little bit of uh, what's uh, the different, where we divide the, the, the presentation and we're trying to present three feature specific uh, uh, development where we were doing in the, in, the, um, in the project. The first one is this uh, building the high chem model. Uh, and uh, well, HiChem is one of the, the, the specific numerical tools we're using to develop uh, the, all the chemistry produced by the jet fuel. And we want to incorporate also the effect of biofuel. So we had to do reaction tests in different and specific kind of flames. And with this, we took up the, the, the data. And with this data, we can uh, generate the model. So it's a, it's a kinetic model to uh, understand and to predict what's going on with the fuel. So we are focusing in isoparaffins, cycloparaffins, and also aromatics. 
and this gives us uh, the required information to understand what's going on with the soot production because uh, for the soot it's necessary to have all the chemistry. So this is the chemical part necessary to understand what's what's uh, necessary. So a lot of data, a lot of information, different tests in order to deliver this high chem model that uh, we need also from our, the Chilean side to uh, try to study the big picture in the flame to produce the soot. So uh, Professor Kuhn is, is working in this and uh, developing this new model for the RP3. RP3 is the jet fuel from the Chinese uh, side. So it's not the same as the uh, American, that's more like uh, the, the, the regular already studied. So we have a big, uh, a good base, but we need to uh, develop it anyway, um, the specific uh, jet fuel for the Chinese and also then incorporate the biofuel. So this is the, the development. It's been very successful and uh, a lot of work. So Professor Kuhn is really working really hard in order to give us this model to continue with the next development. The second feature presentation is associated with Manta. It is a, a, a tool uh, with a virtual reality. And the idea is um, try to see the, the bonding process between the molecules in order to produce the soot. Because right now it's a big question how we can pass from this gaseous phase into solid phase. And, um, and, and it's a physical and also chemical process. So uh, this new development is associated with uh, this uh, new tool. So trying to figure out how they, they react and uh, they, the Chinese team produced this tool that's very uh, interesting and, and very graphical to see what's going on. So for a, a mechanical point of view, that's my, more side, my side is uh, very helpful to understand what's producing the different aspects in the, in the, in the reaction. So very interesting tool. And, and this won a prize also. And then uh, the third uh, presentation is associated with the, the, the development we're trying to do with the jet fuel and this more the Chilean side. So we're working in, in laminar diffusion flames on the lab. And for this, we took uh, like a base flame, this is a, co um, a methane air flame, and then we vaporize jet fuel in order to see the, the effects on the soot production. So this, uh, a lot of, um, diagnostic in order to uh, uh, um, obtain temperature measurements and also soot volume fraction. That's the key uh, aspect we're trying to, to figure out uh, in order to have the data for the models. So uh, this, this uh, Andres where we, we were, uh, was working a lot in order to have this information. And for me, uh, I need to, to took I, I had to took the high chem model in this case for the jet A1, this the, the American jet fuel as a first start. And then uh, we needed to incorporate the pH. pH is the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. So we need those species to have suit for our model. So we need to, to first have, um, to make a, an extension of the mechanism. So this uh, a, a developing, a still developing aspect. And then with this uh, extended model, we can introduce to high, to Coflame. Coflame is uh, another tool uh, in order to predict the soot production from these flames. So uh, we're uh, working in, in these aspects and predict and produce. So the flame and we, it's a CFD code. So uh, simulate everything and calculate everything in terms of the soot. It's a sectional model, so it's very, uh, heavy in terms of computational uh, cost, but we are very uh, satisfied with the results already obtained. So for example, this is experimental information and this numerical information, and it's, you can see it's not perfect, but we're in a very good track. Also in terms of temperature, this is a key feature of the flame. If temperature is not well predicted, it's nothing going to work. So temperature for us is quite uh, similar. The peak is very good and also the, the, the distribution seems quite okay. So in terms of radial information and also axial profiles, you can see it's uh, quite uh, uh, accurate in terms of prediction. So very happy with this. 
And from this test, we can see that there is actually a good uh, compatibility in, in terms of high chem and, and coflame. So very, very happy. And this is going to give us a, a hopefully very good result when we have the RP3 uh, data. Also in terms of soot formation, the, uh, it's also very well predicted. And, and uh, this is very surprising because normally uh, for gaseous flame, it works more or less okay, but with these vaporized uh, liquid flames, it's not very uh, it's, it's not very clear uh, until this day. So very good with this. And we saw also that the high chem needs a little extension of the to be optimized in order to have very good prediction. Okay, so in terms of milestone, we were working a lot in terms of experiments and also numerical. So, so this is first the, the experimental side, and you can see that uh, we try to divide in terms of the Chinese and also the Chilean team. Uh, very different and complementary um, diagnostics in terms of different also uh, experiments to hide, to obtain the necessary data to fit for the numerical uh, model. So. You can see that we are working a lot in different aspects of the, the, the model of the, the suit. So in terms of in the flame, in the uh, morphological aspects in the in, inside each uh, suit particle, and uh, also in terms of compatibility between the different uh, developments. So we're working a lot and we are very happy. And I think now we are soon, we are having this high chem model for the jet fuel is going to give us uh, in the right track uh, for the understanding what's going on with the soft production from this and then for the biofuel addition. In terms of perspective, we have the experiments for one side. So we continue with the biofuel and have tried to have the, the properties and also the soot morphological aspect. So the, this is very important for us. Also improved understanding with uh, the oxygen addition. So oxygen is going to modify temperature, so change everything. So that's very important for us. And also we want to see the maturity, what's one key aspects of what's going on from the flame uh, uh, in terms of the biofuel addition. In terms of modeling, we're, we're working with creating this high chem specifically for the, the Chinese jet fuel and also by the biomass addition. We are trying to establish the kinetic model in order to have the, uh, the key aspect of the soot reactive part. And also we are working with the MOPS, which is another software, very focalized and very specific in terms of how the pH uh, start uh, generating this soot shape and this aggregation is aspect. So uh, we, we, we need some key data in order to produce the, this and this will give us a lot of information, for example, in the harmful of the, uh, uh, the jet, the, the soot particles that are going to produce by the plane, for example. So well, thank you for all the funding uh, institutions and thank you for your attention and sorry for the inconvenience we had. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you, Dongping. Um, we understand that uh, this is a virtual event, so the problems uh, may happen. So no problem. Uh, we move uh, just to make a note that this was the only project which uh, on the topic of chemistry of uh, renewable energy. So we are moving now with the water resource management projects. And the first one will be Marcelo Olivares from University of Chile and uh, Fujiang Tian from Tsinghua University. Thank you. I think Fujiang is going to start with the presentation. Y okay. You want me to start? Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair, and uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening. Uh, my name is Fu Chang Tian from Tsinghua University. Uh, I will report the joint project comparative study on water food energy nexus at the river basin level in China and Chile, uh, reconciling hydropower and competing water uses. So I will talk about three parts. First, introduction. Uh, we know the population growth create, uh, 
the population growth increased water demands and the climate change elders water availability. With all of these, the competition and the synergy among water, food, and energy is becoming more complicated. So this study aims to enhance our understanding uh, towards the balance among multiple water utilizations, including hydropower, uh, irrigation, uh, fishery entertainment. So this study chooses the large river, Lansang Mekong River, uh, and the three small uh, rivers uh, in Chile as a study area and aims to conduct a joint uh, investigation on different uh, skills. So collaborators, uh, including Dr. Ting Jiju from Zhejiang University and uh, Marcelo from University of Chile. Uh, okay, second, the progress. Uh, so for, for China side, we focus on the Lansang Mekong River. Uh, this is the transboundary river shared by China and the five uh, Southeastern uh, Asian countries. Uh, a dozen of them uh, had been constructed in China and uh, uh, Laos, the downstream is rich in, in fertile land, and the Mekong Delta uh, is the most important food basket. So also, there is uh, our big lake, Tony Sap Lake, connecting to Mekong River. Uh, yes, this lake is abundant uh, in fish. So to understand uh, the relations among different uh, sectors, uh, we established or uh, integrated the uh, uh, hydrological hydrodynamic model and a water, energy, food, uh, fishery, uh, diplomacy, uh, nexus model. So totally we have uh, already published uh, 12 papers and uh, uh, six of them uh, on health and the journal hydrology and three of them on Chinese journals. So the integrated uh, model, including three components, the hydrodynamic model is developed for the Tony Sub Lake. To run this model, we need the inflow to lakes from a mainstream and the, the tributary. Uh, to this end, we develop a distributed hydrological model for the whole basin. And uh, what level outlet uh, boundary is required? Uh, and a machine learning model uh, is developed for this purpose. With this integrated model, we can evaluate the impacts of uh, dam operation on downstream flows in every detail. And then we develop a nexus model coupled with the above integrated model. The model can simulate the reservoir operation, can calculate benefits of hydropower, uh, irrigation, uh, fishery. Most importantly, it can simulate the cooperation feedback between upstream and downstream countries. In this way, the nexus model can analyze competition and synergy relations between multiple stakeholders on the different cooperation level. So some details of critical modules. Uh, for fishery, we learned from our Chile uh, partner uh, to set up an eco-friendly flow curve and uh, an unfriendly uh, flow curve in order to explore the trade-off between fishery, agriculture, and hydropower. And uh, we proposed our diplomatic model to simulate the evolution, evolution of cooperation and the conflict dynamics. So to save time, I don't uh, go into detail here. Uh, the model has been carefully calibrated and uh, well uh, validated for benefits and the cooperation dynamics. We developed our big data method to quantify cooperation dynamics based on published news media articles. The observed pattern can well uh, validate our model. So with the model, we have uh, explored uh, important uh, questions like how much energy would be sacrificed by increasing 1% of food uh, uh, benefits. So our results have been applied uh, to Lansang Mekong Cooperation Mechanism. And uh, my interviews on uh, CGTN and the CNA clarified uh, the impacts of up dam, uh, upstream dams on downstream irrigation and fishery. Uh, I was also uh, invited to deliver a speech on the second Lansang Mekong Forum. 
Then the third part, the collaboration activities. Uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic, we have to cancel uh, the planned field uh, uh, visit, but the regular seminars are held to exchange ideas and uh, uh, progress between the two teams. Uh, we also collaborate by jointly guiding graduate students. This is the list of uh, students that participated in, in this uh, project, uh, jointly guided by our uh, PIs. So the joint paper are in preparation. Uh, three, papers, three papers are ready to submit in the coming uh, one or two months. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Please, Marcelo. Thank you, Marcelo, go ahead. Marcelo, we don't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I missed the mute. Okay, so I was saying, this is our approach to a problem. Uh, this, this, uh, this picture shows it, it's a river basin approach to the, the conflict between hydropower and alternative water uses. We consider hydropower as, a, as an additional water user in the basin and in that context, we perform our analysis. So the, the research team on the Chile side of the project, it, uh, it includes um, six uh, researchers that are from the uh, from universities, but also from, from the private sector that are, that are helping us with some uh, technological advances that we are using. Also during the course of the project, we've had um, five students, three of them are um, civil engineering bachelor students that are um, all done finished at this point. And now we have ongoing master's students, uh, Eugenio and Gabriela. So um, as I said, we focus on the conflict of uh, hydropower with alternative water uses. Um, the conflict has been on the press for many of these basins. So based on, on those existing conflicts, we selected four basins. And it was three in the beginning, but we added the Maipo River Basin. Uh, we, first, we focused on um, river basins where, where existing conflicts between hydropower and alternative uses, but then we added the Maipo since the potential interference between the new project Alto Maipo and, and the other uses would be important to be studied as well. So we have um, four different river basins in Chile and with four types of conflicts or contexts of interaction between hydropower and alternative water uses. In the Maipo, we have run of river, hydropower, uh, and, and the competition is with agriculture and drinking water. In the Tingirica River, we have run of river hydropower and agriculture. Maule and Bio, Bio have reservoir hydropower, but the competing use is agriculture and native fish um, uh, respectively. So our approach is mainly we perform a diagnostic of historical operations. We care by interference, we refer very specifically about how hydropower operations affect stream flows and water availability in time and space for the alternative water uses downstream. That's the point. So uh, hydropower plants operate, that they discharge the, um, the flows that they run through the, the turbines and then those flows are, um, are, have an, an expression on downstream stream flows. And that's what we, we care about. So we perform a diagnostic of operations of uh, hydropower plants and stream flows at downstream locations. And then we develop mathematic models that predict future operations of hydropower plants in the basins. And then these uh, analyses are short and both um, and long-term depending on the case. So Tingarica, we, we perform our diagnostic. We have the names of the students that mainly have worked on this, on this, um, on this different basins we develop a conceptual model and then a, mathem a mathematical model. The good thing about this, in, in particular in Tingirik and Maipo, we are very, very closely involved with the users organizations. So they participated also in the diagnostic and also in the model development. Uh, in Maipo River Basin, something similar, we have the users organizations actively involved in our uh, and we, we report our results uh, from the historical analysis, but we also developed the conceptual model and now in the process of uh, developing the, the, the mathematical model for uh, future operations. 
in the uh, BOV River, we are at the point of the diagnostic was completed by Matias, who this picture shows him defending his, um, his uh, civil engineering thesis. So essentially we look at how variable stream flows are along the day in different hours of the day. And then also when you look long terms in uh, within two weeks here, you see those fluctuations in flow. So that's what we care about. And we measure that through indices of hydrologic alteration. Uh, in the Maule River Basin, the, um, the situation is a little bit different. You have a large system of reservoirs that uh, the problem that interferes is now uh, seasonal, okay? In different seasons in the year, you have um, different uh, interests of using water for hydropower or irrigation. And you see that the problem is um, that the, the main reservoir upstream in the basin has been um, uh, decreasing his, its levels through the last decade. So this is an important problem and we're in the analysis of a simulation model now. We have some, um, some products, some outcomes that are already there, but also we have ongoing activities, joint activities with the, with the Kine uh, team. And um, our main joint activities are centered around um, uh, student advising. We have six student advising um, jointly now, and we, are, we have the three joint papers that uh, Fukian just mentioned. So we've held lots of, of uh, online meetings, and we also have uh, an invited seminar scheduled for next week from a, from a recent student of Fukian. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now we go uh, to our next project is uh, I invite uh, Alejandra Sten from the University of Concepcion and Jay Zeng from Southern University of Science and Technology. Please go ahead. Can, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yes. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present some results we got in this project that it's called, I have a, a, a problem with the voice but this week, so I will try to speak not so fast. I, our project is called Improving Water Quality to Sustain Watershed Ecosystem and Socioeconomic Development Under Climate Change at China-Chile Comparative Study. The idea of this project is born because here in, at the BOV Watershed, we have a a second water quality normative. And when we see the, the results of the monitoring, we can see that it's overpassed and we will have to do a decontamination plan in the short term. So we need uh, some uh, tools to do that. Uh, our partners is uh, Professor Ji Seng from the uh, university from, from the Southern University of Science and Technology. And the general objective, as I was saying from the project, is to generate a modeling tool based on the provision of ecosystem services that allows to evaluate different regulatory scenarios related to water quality in the BioBio -Bio watershed, considering climate change, and also assess the applicability in a different environmental scenario that is the Chinese watershed. One of the big uh, problems that we have to have dealing during the, the past two and a half years is that we go and met in person with the Chinese colleagues and they couldn't come and see our reality. It's different to see pictures of a watershed that go to the field and see which is the reality. That I think is one of the most uh, problems that we have faced during the during the, these last two years. Uh, these are all the researchers and technical support that are included in the project. As it is a water quality project, is, uh, we have um, uh, engineers and also as we want to evaluate, and that is a, a good uh, tool for uh, further uh, scenarios analysis to make a the contamination plant and are also lawyers involved and also economists. And uh, we have been working for, from different, with different undergraduate students from engineering and uh, also environmental, civil engineering and environmental engineering. 
uh, we have two the undergrad thesis that are finishing and some of them in, in under development and, we, and two more that will start now the second semester. Uh, and that is 22, not 21. And uh, that is what uh, we had uh, some problems to get students involved because of the pandemic. We are just uh, this semester going back to uh, all uh, not online teaching. And so we, uh, we could, uh, in, Last semester we started with hybrid uh, teaching, so we could uh, they uh, have more contact with the students to involve them in the in the project. That was very difficult. The first year, the twenty twenty, that was the first year. And also regarding master students, we have a finished one thesis that is now has finished one month ago, and we are starting one. In, in the topic of, of sediment uh, modeling. And we will start a second, uh, a third one, the second semester of this year. The, uh, Carlos is now working in the project, of the, in the thesis project. And in, in the case of what we have in advance, we have calibrated with SWAT the, at a monthly level, and we are now finishing at a daily level, uh, the um, BioView -Bio watershed. And also run some different climate change scenarios, and we are starting, and we have started to calibrate also uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and sediment. And uh, in the case of uh, activities with uh, our China partners, we had considered during the first year that we are, were visiting China to know and uh, know his. Uh, watershed under study and the second year they won't come here but and also uh, we had a pre, uh, uh, we had a planet a visit from a student to China for one month to work there and work in the paper that we are trying to but it was not possible to do it this year it is considered that we go to visit China but it will depend on the possibilities that it China opens the, the, and we can go uh, without the 14 days of quarantine because that is too much to afford it for, for a project. And next year it has, is planned that our colleagues visit uh, Chile for, uh, for to work in, the, in some publications. We had some workshop, uh, workshops and we, we have presented basins, the results, and in the last one that we have in January this year, we show that we, with sediment calibration, we have big problems. And, and that is why we are just now doing this uh, master thesis regarding optimization of the parameters vinculated to sediment transport. And in that we are, uh, we have some, we have, are in touch with uh, a postdoc student of China that has this, has have the same problems, and we will see. We want to see how we can work together in improving uh, sediment uh, modeling. And also, <clears throat> one of the big uses that we have here, if we see, we are not. We have not so much uh, flows to calibrate, but uh, you can say that you can do it, but. If we start calibrating uh, water, parameter, uh, water parameters, then we see that we have very few data, for example, three or four data for per year. So we are working, Ryu Song and Pedro Arriagada, who is from our team, are working now in, in an application of a deep learning machine and to see if we can generate more uh, data to have more data available for calibration. That is in basic. I hope I Thank hope. you, Alejandro. Uh, Jizeng? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, Jizeng. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So I will share my PPT. Uh, can you see it? That's okay. Okay. 
So yeah, thank uh, Alejandro to, uh, for the introduction. So I will briefly introduce uh, the progress in China. Uh, the overarching uh, research problem is how to improve water what quality from the perspective of food, energy, water nexus. So we uh, picked two watersheds, uh, Jiulong River watershed in China and the, the Biobio Bio watershed in Chile. So they have distant, uh, distinct net natural and socioeconomic setting, but very uh, similar fuel nexus, uh, like uh, intensive agriculture, hydropower production, and uh, nutrients pollution. So uh, the core member of the Chinese team are from my university, Sustec, and the Xiamen University. Uh, Professor Neng Wangcheng is a co-PI at the Xiamen University. Uh, due to the COVID-19, so we have to uh, meet our uh, friends, Chile friends online. Uh, uh, we have four tasks in China here. One is data acquisition, uh, second model innovation. Uh, both of these tasks have already been finished. And the nexus analysis, the third task, and which, uh, which is ongoing. And, uh, we planned for the next year to do a China-Chile uh, comparison and a synthesis. For data acquisition, we collected data from existing sources, and we also set up uh, 29 sampling sites uh, within the watershed. Uh, we sampled three times in 2020 and four times in uh, 2021. We analyzed the, the nitrogen and the phosphorus contents in the water samples. So here uh, we summarize the uh, results in these figures. Uh, we also organized a field survey to collect information of uh, crop management, fertilizer use, uh, livestock breeding in uh, August 20, 2020. So if 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 no COVID nineteen, so our chili friend should have been uh, in this uh, uh, field survey, but uh, unfortunately. Uh, as for model innovation, first of all, we improved uh, the nitrogen percolation simulation function of SWAT, which is a, a widely used watershed water quality model. And uh, with the improved model, uh, we uh, the the, the mod, uh, we got very good uh, simulation results of daily uh, stream flow, uh, very accurate, and uh, the model can provide adequate uh, simulations for monthly uh, nitrogen loadings. Uh, uh, with this uh, uh, well calibrated SWOT model, uh, we can perform a detailed source attribution of nitrogen. In addition, we also developed deep learning models of daily nitrogen concentration and the flux uh, using long short term memory uh, uh, ne uh, network, so which shows uh, exceptional performance uh, for the concentration and flux. So as Alejandra uh, uh, mentioned, so we, we may try to implement uh, this model in, in Chile as well. For the next analysis ongoing, and uh, actually we have done larger scale studies uh, for the entire China. For example, we investigated the effects of organic and conservation agriculture on ammonia emission, crop productivity, and nitrogen use efficiency based on a meta-analysis and uh, machine learning algorithm. So the results have already been published in uh, environmental science and technology. So next, uh, for the next year, we hope we can do the, the comparison and the synthesis studies um, uh, with our uh, Chile friends. And based on this part of research, uh, we hope we can inform policy making and integrate management to achieve sustainable de development goals uh, within the two uh, worksheets. So here is a list of SCI papers we have published related to this project, mostly in top tier journals, uh, such as Nature Food, uh, Environmental Science and Technology, Water Resource Research, uh, GIL, et cetera. 
Uh, that's all for my short presentation, and uh, thank you very much. So we do hope to meet our Chile friends in person next year before the end of the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much and for that very nice picture. Um, due to the time, we will go do now for the well-being break, and we resume here sharply at uh, 10. So uh, we start with uh, Samuel Ortega from the University of Talca and Su Fen Wang from China Agricultural University. So um, please be here at sharply at 10. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, no, 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 I begin. Uh, good evening and uh, good morning, everyone. I'm the Chinese PI, uh, Su Fen Wang. Uh, from Chan Agriculture University. Now, on behalf of our project group, I will show what we did during past two years about our joint project. Our topic is optimization uh, of- Wang老师, Wang老师. Hey,好，王老师，哎，是这样的，刚才那个对，刚才主持人说现在我们提前有一个break，然后十点钟的时候大家准时回来，所以您稍等一下，就是break回来以后第一个马上是您开始，十点钟。行，行，可以。嗯
I don't hear you much, but I wrote you a note on your WhatsApp. Yes. Please check it and answer me. Thank you. Creo que no, Marcelo, creo que no, no vamos a poder, eh, poder hacer mucha discusión, por lo que vamos. Se pierde el sonido, perdona. Yo escuché bien. Hola. Me escuchaba mucho. Eh, quizás deberíamos dejar las presentaciones, mandarte las presentaciones. Sí, para obvio. Que te compartan. Obvio, obvio. Eso lo vamos sí. a solicitar eh, posterior del evento o al final yo le voy a decir de todos modos. Sí, y deberíamos quizás ponerle en la portada todo, todo lo... So we are back now. I hope uh, everyone is here and we will start with the presentation of... Uh, Samuel Ortega from University of Talca and uh, Sufin Wang from China Agricultural University. Hey, Wang Long Shi Zhang Shila. Professor Wang. Now we can, we see your. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, continue. Good evening and good morning, everyone. I'm Su Fen Wang, a Chinese PI from China Agriculture University. Now, on behalf of our project group, I will show what we did during past two years about our joint project. Our topic is optimization of the spatial reliability of crop water requirement using satellite and UAV platforms. My presentation includes three parts. Firstly, allow me to help give a brief introduction of the objectives of our project, mainly include estimating crop water requirements at the farm and regional scales based on satellite and the UAV platforms. The other is to quantify and optimize the space dynamic of crop water consumption using the cellular automotive model. Secondly, I will show our ongoing research activities. According to our project objectives, we Chinese side conducted the ET estimation at its petition based on extended straight temperature temperature model, modest product, UAV data, and ground monitoring data. Our experiment was mainly conducted in Xi'an River Experimental Station, which is national experimental station in Wei of Gansu province. And also the model was validated with anti coherence let meter and the stable isotopes. The results showed good correlation for both UAV monitoring and ground estimation. Based on the ET model, we innovatively quantified the effect of saddle pixels on ET. The accuracy of ET estimation is improved by 1.30. 38% to 7.16%. The result is published on Remoting Session Journal. And uh, the scale effect of estimating T based on GROD and UAV thermal IS 
was also analyzed. Besides, in the basin scale, decree of inflows of platinum structure adjustment, bill margin and water saving measures on ET variations was quantified. Human activity attributions in water saving project to ET increased from 26% to 77%. Based on above ET estimation and analysis of ET influence factors in different scales, we evaluate crop suitability in each grade. Considering the suitability and the CA, CA works model was proposed to optimize the, the spatial dynamic of crop water requirement. The model can obtain the crop water consumption, the irrigation water requirement for each growth period in grade scale. This is the concrete approach of CA water model. The seller state function print the state change on each grade. Based on the transformation rules of the same model, and we set three search paths and two search directions. Besides, we keep in touch closely with Chile side. A test photos are Professor Samuel visited China Agricultural University in 2019. And we have our peak project kickoff meeting and workshop in CEO. Because of the effect of the COVID-19, we also have discussion with each other through joint workshops, online meeting, email, and so on. Based on above mentioned results, we have finished six papers and four joint publications. Many thanks for the support from the NSFC. Based on the current project, in the near future, we also have more collaborative opportunities such as faculty and PhD students exchange, joint workshops or international conferences. And also, we hope when COVID-19 is over, we can visit each other and have more collaboration deeply. We are a United Job Group. Thanks everyone for their efforts on the project. That's all. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Samuel. Okay, I will set up the presentation. Okay. It, it's okay? Not yet, but it's coming. Okay. No. It takes time. Ah. <laughs> uh, maybe you can do it so once again you can stop and try oh, okay all right Oh, I don't know what's happening. If not, you always can send it to me and I can share it from here. Um, you can send it to me, please, just in case. And uh, meanwhile, please try to stop sharing and then try again. OK. 
bad idea. Please try to share it again. Samuel, uh, try to share your screen again. <laughs> So we have some technical problems. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I just wanted to share with you that uh, we will probably try to to put this session on our YouTube account, and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, some notes in Spanish though, so you can you can also share it with you. And also for presentations, please uh, make sure send us your presentation. Uh, probably uh, Jing can collect presentation of the Chinese researchers and uh, 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 Ingrid and I, uh, we can collect uh, presentations from uh, from Chilean researchers. So we can sure, no problem. we can actually uh, share it with everyone. Thank you. Yeah, sure, no problem. Hello, hello. Yes, Samuel, please try it again. Sorry. Yeah, I will try. Sorry, very sorry. I have something happened with my my computer or the internet. Now, can you see? Not yet. Oh. Yes. Okay, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for waiting for me. Okay, uh, well, uh, uh, Sufen explain a little bit about the title. I want to go faster. Uh, and uh, my team, we are working with Luis Morales from University of Chile and Marco Molina Montenegro from University of Talca. Uh, well, the motivation of this project is that uh, in most countries, in China and Chile, we are facing water scarcity, which uh, will uh, limit it, which, which will be the limiting factor for agricultural production. So uh, we have two big challenges. One is to increase water productivity. This means to produce more with less water. And the second is to adapt agricultural system to water scarcity using new technology. So in this project, well, the, the objective wasn't explained. The idea was to use remote sensing technology and UEV drones to estimate uh, water use for uh, orchards and corn. Uh, well, you can see here, uh, we set up uh, two experiments. One was uh, set up in a vineyard. You can see the picture here. And also we have another in, uh, in uh, Hasselnut. And this, uh, in this experiment, we have already two years of data. Fortunately, in spite of the COVID, we were able to take data in the field because the field is very close to us. So we were, take, uh, we were able to take data, met meteorological data, and also energy balance data and uh, remote sensing data. And you can see here, uh, this is the, the, the model that we are trying to, to use for estimating uh, water demands using drones. And you can see in, in the picture, uh, we got a very good uh, comparison. And, uh, and, and then we were able to uh, estimate uh, transpiration and evaporation, look, with the resolution six by six centimeters. So this is the, the, high, the high accuracy that we are getting uh, using this, uh, this model. Similar work is having done with, with our partner from, uh, from China. Well, also in this uh, project and uh, participate uh, several students taking measurements. We have already one postdoc 
three PhD and five master's students and four undergraduate students, all of them, they are in charge of taking different type of data, soil moisture data, plant fissure data, weather data, and so on. Here we have another instrument in a decovariant system. We install in a hazelnut and linear. This uh, instrument allows us to validate uh, the model from uh, uh, remote sensing uh, data and from the drones. And well, we already, we have uh, several joint publications that already are published. And right now we submit one publication. This is a segment of uh, atmospheric emissivity parameter under cloudy days for the whole world using a database available in the, in the internet. And you can see that we were able to estimate in general, the energy balance, the net radiation in different places of the world. So we are very happy we, we submitted this uh, manuscript uh, last week ago. And right now we are working on uh, estimation of water demands and, uh, or evapotranspiration in China and Chile. Here is a very preliminary result for China. We were, we were able to estimate evapotranspiration using a model, simple model. And the idea is to uh, this coming year to work in a paper uh, for publishing a, 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 a paper and, and with a simulation of evapotranspiration uh, in China and, and Chile. So we hope uh, in next uh, month we, are, we, we want to have a meeting with our partner from China to discuss uh, the strategy or the best strategy to, to do the analysis and to prepare the manuscript. Well, has uh, told you the, and uh, we visit, we, we have a great visit in, uh, in uh, College of Water Resources and Civil Engineering in 2019. We, we got a very good experience and we changed a lot of ideas. And also we did a, a all online webinar was really good. We did a four presentation in April, April 21. This was last year. So uh, I think right now we are planning to do two seminars, one with PhD students and another, and I think we will discuss in August for using UEV to estimate crop water use. Uh, and uh, this is my, my, my short presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we understand perfectly that during this time we can have technical problems, so don't worry. So we move to Marco Campos from University of La Frontera and uh, Jung Hong Bei from the Beijing Normal University. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I can share my screen. Uh, I'm not uh, allowed to do that. Please, I, I need permission to do that. But we can see your screen. Ah, you can, you have to, uh, Samuel, can you t please take out your... Yep, okay. Yeah. And now you can do it. Ah, now, okay. Now, okay, now it's possible. Okay. Yeah, we can see your computer. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Sorry, I move it to here. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, perfect. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, my name is Marco Campos. I'm representing Dr. Miko Jorquera, that is the main uh, researcher from our Chilean side of this project. And also we'll present here uh, Dr. Jung Hong Bai from the Chinese uh, part. And I uh, present part of this project that uh, the name is Special temporal patterns of bacteria community in sediments of Villa Rica and Baghdad and Lake of their potential environmental public health indicators in water resource management policies for Southern Chilean and Northern Chinese Lake. Give me a second, please. No, it's okay. Sorry. Um, I try to do this briefly uh, in five minutes, and I present the main mi milestone of this project and why to do, why to study uh, lakes in our country and China, uh, China site, uh, because lakes are water bodies very important for us, 
and are providing essential ecosystem services for us where, that are uh, uh, useful things that they, from the mankind uh, are obtaining advantage and are also important for us, for example, because Villarica Lake is an important tourist place for us. And also because in Baghdad, the lake in, Ch in China is also very important for this kind of reason and provide a lot of uh, uh, these uh, ecosystem services for us. And there, the biodiversity also and functions of the aquatic ecosystem are very important for this uh, function of this uh, aquatic uh, um, environment. For this reason, it's very important to study this, um, the quality of these uh, water bodies or also the quality of uh, these ecosystem services and try to uh, save these ecosystem services for us. Why study the Villarica Lake? Because Villarica Lake uh, was recently declared as a saturated zone uh, by the, the normal uh, measurements as a chlorophyll, transparency, and dissolved phosphorus. Also, because this is uh, saturated with uh, nutrients. So the state uh, declared this uh, um, water body as saturated and is promoting currently. Uh, policies to for a decontamination plan uh, that is now is starting to be in uh, is starting now um, this because this has broken the um, the equilibrium of this water quality the this uh, water body so uh, we need to take advantage of this and study different um, a point of view to see what is happening there and how we can uh, contribute with, with, with this uh, the contamination plan. Why study the uh, bacteria community there? Because uh, as you know, bacteria is one of the most spread uh, um, organism group uh, worldwide. Uh, this bacteria is involved in nutrient cycling, degradation of recalcitrant compounds, such as, for example, pesticides, a production of a bioactive compost such as antibiotics and also um, one some groups of these bacteria can be um, indicators of a contamination of a anthropogenic intervention in these areas so uh, why study this uh, this community because uh, it's very important about the uh, information that uh, bacteria community can provide us and why study also the sediment because a bacteria community is more abundant there and is more stable. So studying the bacteria community of the sediment of these lakes, we can obtain maybe uh, some valuable information and uh, provide with this information to the um, state and for to make new policies about the recovery of this uh, aquatic environment. For this reason, the main objective of this project was characterized and the bacteria community of Villarrica by the Lake and evaluate their potential uh, as environmental public health indicator for the management of their uh, water resource um, to make policies in the Southern Chilean lakes and Northern Chile, uh, Chinese lakes. Um, we have five uh, objectives and we have, uh, uh, we have um, advanced in each of these objectives. Uh, for example, we have the first one, uh, the first objective uh, that is complete now because we have uh, characterized the bacteria community in Villarrica Lake and Bacteria Lake uh, we have some papers or scientific articles that is are, are already published. And we are now in our Chilean site, determinated the abundance of antibiotic resistant, also there beside degrading bacteria um, and the potential of this uh, pathogenic bacteria in both lakes um, from the sediments. Also, we are evaluating now the uh, potential of bacteria community in sediments uh, as a public health indicators for the management uh, of the water resource in both lakes. And also we are evaluating the potential of bacteria community in sediments uh, as indicator for the um, uh, for new policies. Uh, we are now sustaining the uh, uh, meetings with the local uh, public uh, uh, stakeholders. And also with the Chinese uh, side, we, we are uh, uh, keeping in contact by webinars and different uh, seminars, uh, trying to uh, establish this uh, uh, network. Also, this is uh, a point to this last uh, objective that is uh, uh, establishing a network between the Chinese and the Chilean uh, side, or to do, uh, try to establish this 
the uh, bacteria community as an important indicator for the management of the uh, bacteria of the uh, lake uh, health. In this order, uh, the structure of the functional property of bacteria community of, from Villarrica Lakes is already uh, have been managed in a art article that we have uh, submitted to uh, microbial um, ecology, where uh, our team from uh, MLAP team from the Chilean side and also uh, represents from the Chinese side uh, are included in this article. Also, we have a study the Budi Lake that is also important and representative lake here in our region, where also um, um, the Chilean and the Chinese side are included in, in this article. Also, at advantage, we have um, we had advanced in the quantification of uh, uh, antibiotic resistant and herbicide degrading bacteria by QPCR um, abundance, and we have uh, found. Uh, abundance of uh, resistant uh, my, microbial communities related to the tetracycline uh, resistance. Also, uh, with the phosphorocycline um, uh, recycling there uh, as a nutrient, important nutrient for feeding the blooms. Uh, also, atranside degrading bacteria and glyphosate degrading bacteria. And we have uh, isolated uh, some important um, strains uh, from these sediments where the mains are, for example, the resistant to tetracycline, oxytetracycline, uh, and pisciline, and different, other different uh, groups of antibiotics. So now we are characterizing these uh, strains. Um, this will be part of a near future um, article that we are submitting coming soon. Also, as international seminars and meeting in advance to approach to the Chinese size and also to the to the scientific um, area, we have we have done three different uh, seminars. When 2020, 2021, and 2022, uh, we are when Dr. Jorquera has been present. Also, Chan Rong, that is also a very important um, researcher from the Chinese side. Me there, um, meetings with the um, groups from USA, also from uh, Chinese. And this last meeting that was this year, uh, where Dr. Bai was also present by, by remote in a, a way. Um, this is uh, the most important meeting that we have uh, um, done actually. Uh, fortunately, we have not uh, possible to visit China and also the scientific, the Chinese scientific have not been possible to allow to, to come in to Chile also because uh, you know the COVID restriction have been very strong to us. Uh, this has been a, 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 a been very sad for us because we want to be there and they want to be here and to share our uh, research. Also, our outreach activities, uh, we have this wonderful uh, it's been laboratory. It's already only for you, and yes. we, I understand that you have your Chinese colleague as well, so please stop. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll finish now. And uh, this uh, we have been uh, doing the, the outreach activities, uh, uh, approaching to the outreach and cyber community. Also, we have this newspaper note uh, from this year's. And I think this is all for our side. And I leave you with the doctor by now for for the Chinese side. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, please, doctor Bai. Let me. Let me please uh, stop to share the. Okay, no worries. Uh, Dr. Bay? Bye, Lausche. Bye, Jiao Shou. Yeah, now now we can see you, but we don't have your. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I will start to my screen sharing. Can you see my? We can see your screen, TV? but uh, you have to put in presentation mode. Okay. It's okay. Yes. Now it's fine. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will uh, report the 
a progress of the adult product from Chinese side. Uh, for Chinese side, we have two universities involved in this uh, project, including BNU and uh, uh, Fudou University. I'm Jun Hongbai from Beijing Normal University. Uh, my report will focus on these four uh, aspects. Firstly, I would like to briefly introduce the uh, in, uh, research background. It's well known that a uh, leak to uh, your uh, eutrophication and pollution are major global environmental pro uh, problems in the world. This is also the case in China and uh, Chile. Microorganisms are sensitive to pollutants. Uh, whether it is possible to find some microbial indicators to respond to pollutants has become a bottleneck problem to simplify water resource management. In our project, we selected the Bayangdian Lake in China and the uh, Villericard Lake in Chile to measure uh, spatial and uh, temporal distribution of back, uh, bacterial communicative. Under the cooperation, uh, Chinese side uh, will focus on Bayangdian Lake. Uh, Bayangdian Lake is the largest uh, shallow lake in the North China Plain. We investigated nitrogen, phosphorus, heavy metals, uh, antibiotics, herbicides in waters and sediments in the lake, and found that this lake is not suffering from medium uh, neutrification and uh, antibiotic environmental pollution due to intense human activities. We analyzed the, the microbial communicative structure and uh, biodiversity uh, using 16 SR RNA sequencing. The left figure uh, showed the proteobacteria and uh, endemic uh, species as dominant phylum uh, in waters and uh, sediments. The VN plot uh, component uh, showed uh, in total uh, 59 genus were sharing among four environmental components. And uh, this figure show us the hair uh, sim uh, sim index in surface water and uh, sediments of uh, planting areas in the lake. We constructed the microbial networks and identified the keystone taxa in different environmental components in four seasons. Uh, generally, we screened two keystone genus related to nitrogen uh, cycling in four seasons, and one genus related to organic pollu uh, pollutant degradation in spring and uh, in fall. We found the modular structure of microorganisms in fall or winter. I think this will help us to screen the K indicators in the future work. In total, we identified 201 uh, antibiotic uh, resistance genes, uh, subtypes, based on metagenome screening. Uh, we found that they are uh, they are significantly uh, correlated with nitrate and uh, ammonium nitrogen. We identified the three multi uh, multi drug uh, uh, multi drug uh, resistance uh, genes. Also, we found uh, nitrifying bacteria as a uh, active multi antibiotic uh, uh, herbicide resistance player in the sediments. We also screened the antibiotic degradation uh, bacteria, uh, especially for the typical antibiotic uh, norfloxacin. Now I will briefly show some uh, domestic and international cooperation and uh, uh, communication activities. We have uh, taken part in some uh, academic uh, conferences. Especially in order to overcome uh, the effects of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, China's uh, 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 Chile side and us mainly communicated by international webinars and workshops or by emails to improve uh, our project. 
Also, we have uh, wide international communications with many famous universities from German and uh, America. Uh, additionally, we organize uh, special issues uh, in the journals uh, Eco Hydrology, Hydrobiology, and Frontiers in uh, Marine Science. Uh, we co, uh, co -org uh, organize with Professor uh, Milko to improve the impacts of uh, product, uh, our product uh, results. We have uh, better uh, technical uh, communications and cooperation with uh, Chile side. Uh, besides, Michael mentioned the co publications Dust. Uh, some co authored papers have been are being published uh, with the Chile side from, uh, from us. In the future, we will uh, focus on functional genes studies and uh, will deeply uh, communicate with Chile side on the nitrogen and the phosphorus functional genes. And we will uh, further screen functional genes and the micro uh, uh, communicated uh, finger prints. Uh, to uh, to indicate water environment and the public health. Also, we will compare all results with the Chile side, uh, and uh, co-publish more articles in in high quality journals. That's all. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. And now we move uh, to Julio Sanchez from University of Santiago de Chile and Arun Khan San from Dalian Polytechnic University. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I think it's better that Professor Sun start. Okay, can I start? You okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Share. Okay. Sorry. Somehow uh, it's happening, the same work happened to someone recently. So we don't see your presentation. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Ah, oh, no, it's came out. Great. We see no. you, your presentation. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, the, the, the title of our project is the leading drug the absorbent for removal of the metal cations and dye ions from the waste water. Uh, I think uh, with this, because this raw material is lignin, so I can just introduce the lignin structure because lignin is a aromatic polymers. Uh, the main leakage is the beta O4, is about 60%, and also some small amount of beta beta and beta 5 carbon, carbon, carbon leakages. Uh, in our previous study for the biomass refine for the lignin, as we, we think, I think, uh, I think we, 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 we collaboration with the Sandong Longli Biotech Company. Each year, with this company, each year we produce the 200,000 tons of the corn cob. So produce the, of about uh, 20,000 tons of lignin, also and 30 tons of the bioacid, also the 6 tons of the oligosaccharide and 12,000 tons of the xylitol. So this lignin is mainly used for our raw material in for this study. In this work, the aims of this work is the convert the waste lignin from the pulp and the paper industry and the bar refine process to a number of value and the sustainable and the remark and the markup products such as the lignin absorbent for 
meta cations and ions removed from the waste water. Now, research content is, a, I think, is a three part. The first part is the isolation and the purification of legalism. This is made from the what is from public people industry, what is the bio refined industry. The second work, part of work is prepared five functional catalytic and anglic and lignin based materials through the controlled chemical modifications. The third part is the transfer for the functional derivatives of liquid into valuable materials and you can explore other potential applications in heavy metal remove and waste water treatment. Uh, the, for this, this is we have a list of publications in the peer reviewed international journals. I think that for the first, we, we built a first one is built and supported by this. Uh, the publication is 18 papers, and also there are some other five papers. Now, we also join which are like due to part due to the uh, COVID 19. So, some problems we cannot change in the researchers and the graduate students. We can only use the web uh, seminars. To, we only publish the two joint publications. Also, we applied about the same patents and get uh, three patents related for support by this project. Uh, this one is we will with, with the, about this the third year of the China Chile joint the project the seminar is held in, uh, in last March. Uh, in last March, this is the uh, seminar program and also the uh, cotton of the. Uh, this is about the we last year we we built a plant of liquid production from the peak making black liquid. Uh, this is the year of the, the leaking year, the traditional time per year. This is the, the, the three part. The media for this part, the fraction is, is about the reverse of Moses' memories. Also, I think some research part of that, some summarize some research, give some examples. One is about the leaking large particles preparation by the acidic DS from the bamboo. So the, we, so the bamboo we pre-treat with the acidic DES, we get the lignin and also we character the lignin structures. Also we can say that if the treatment at 120 degree can lead to the cleavage of the beta O4 leakages, the yield lignin is 90%, also the purity is more than 90%. Large percent of this one. So, this is mainly for the isolation and the character relation. Then, we modification as make, make the ligand as the biomaterials. The first one is the ligand function, ligand based on the biocarcule for efficient phosphorate remove and recover from the water. Uh, this, we uh, magnesium oxide functional ligand based biocalculus was prepared by two step process. One is the hydrothermal composition, and the second part is the function uh, This is the obtained these large particles were deposited on the home tiers on the uh, ligand based biomaterials, in which the particle size of the 50 to 100 line meters and the hair food content of 28%. So, so the maximum of the absorption capacity is a reach the over, the, over 900 milligrams per gram for the absorption of the phosphorus. Also, it, 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 uh, now this biomaterial has exhibited the wide pH reach from 2 to 10, higher selectivity and uh, re regeneration ability. Uh, Especially it has exhibited exhibited hair removal efficiency nearly 100 percent, even at a lower phosphorate concentration. It's those say so that you see this is a very good material for removal of phosphorate from the waste water. Also, after use absorption of the phosphorate, 
we can reuse of this uh, absorbable the phosphor rate material and make it uh, make it. Mm. So also uh, we act we act we also find it uh, that phosphor rate will be absorbed on the bar material on the surface like the flower shape of the crystal structure like this structure. Uh, also we find this is the, is the uh, the is just the is the mechanism is just the phosphor rate at which just the you can change pretty uh, very important read. Other sample is a function is the piece of the hydrogel for absorption heavy metal ions from waste water and also make the uh, chimilusins, chimilusins. This hydrogel which is a strong absorption activity for various metal ions from the waste water. This is made by the free radical polymerization fractions. Uh, the maximum absorption of the uh, metal ions is over 300 milligram per gram. And also it can have a higher efficient and rapid remove of various methods from the waste water. So after we absorption of the various metal ions, this is also cartridge can be used for the chemilusiums. Uh, also it can play a higher intense and long lasting, which could be observed by the naked eye even after the 24 hours in dark. So this can be used, hydrogel can not only used for the waste water treatment, also after that they can have education for the biologic imagery, bioassays and underwater lighting. Hmm. The last example is about the ligand, we modified the ligand as the ligand based uh, biofunction material for efficient removal of the chlorium and the organic uh, pollutants, such as uh, this organic structure is such as the made removal of the organic dyes, also, also the uh, also the methyl blue and uh, and the cocoa red, also the methyl orange, also the methyl. For removal of the chlorium uh, six, I can see if the Concentration is below uh, 100 milligram per, per liter. The removal rate is near is about 100 percent. If the concentration is over 1,000 milligram per liter, the removal capacity is about uh, over 500 milligram per, per gram. So this is very also very effective. Uh, for fluid research work, we I think that we we for the isolation of the fragmentation of ligand, we complete. Uh, in 2020, and the preparation functional kinetic and kinetic ligand based materials through the controlled med medical uh, modification, we nearly finished this work. For so next year, we made the work is the transfer of this functional materials into valuable materials and you can explore other potential applications. In industries, we also collaboration was with the two uh, waste water treatment companies in China. Uh, uh, so we thank you for the, for your attention and thank you for the financial support by the National Natural Science Foundation of China. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, please, so you come to us. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, concerning to our part, I'm um, Julio Sanchez, uh, academic of uh, University of Santiago de Chile. Um, um, I'm leading this project uh, and the, the, the group is um, um, it's led by me and also for Professor Mauricio Yanez of my institution. 
Uh, and also Professor Guadalupe Pizarro is member of the group. Uh, she is a uh, academic of another university. It's a technological university uh, in Santiago. Also postdoc uh, Dr. Rudy Martin is also involved in this, in this project. And uh, in a group of our students, uh, in, in their master and also PhD students involved in the project, uh, um, three master students and uh, two uh, is the students that are working on the preparation of the materials. So as uh, Professor Runkan explained us, that our project is related to prepare um, uh, novel materials uh, based on lignin and uh, used for uh, metal and dyes removal from water. So in, uh, for this, uh, we are using the, the lignin, uh, corn corn lignin, uh, to modify, chemically modify the lignin, and also use like a precursor to prepare new hydrogels by uh, simple polymerization, and also to modify some membranes to, in order to use this membrane for uh, metal removal. So we are working in these uh, three lines uh, simultaneously uh, using some lignin and lignin derivated uh, to remove uh, some metals and, and, and some pollutants from water. And uh, well, we have prepared some uh, hydrogel based on lignosulfonate uh, and we obtained a good uh, results in the gels. Uh, so it's a good material with a good shape and also it, it has a good uh, uh, swelling behavior so it can absorb water and also we can use this uh, material to remove chromium from water and also uh, we study the regeneration of the material. So it's also important for the application is the regeneration of the material. So we can stimulate by uh, acid-based uh, equilibrium and we can uh, uh, release the chromium uh, retained from the material. And also we can use the material again and we can use in several cycles. So we have a, a preliminary good results about this kind of material to remove a, 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 a different kind of uh, cations and also uh, some toxic anions like arsenic and even some organic pollutants like a dyes and even some pharmaceuticals. Also, we are at the beginning, we use this material in batch method to, in order to uh, establish some basic parameters like a pH, concentration, time, and also uh, we uh, continue the study using in column system because column system is uh, more applied in the industry. So our idea is to replace the commercial material for our lignin based material. So for this it's important to uh, uh, study the behavior of the material in a column uh, system. And also we, we are working on that in this year. And also we uh, are preparing the same material, including uh, some uh, nanoparticle, metal nanoparticles, and also metal oxide nanoparticles in order to concentrate, for example, some organic pollutants. And after that, we can degrade uh, using uh, lights. So uh, we, can, uh, um, we can study the double uh, function of the material, the, like a concentrator of the pollutant and also like a catalyst uh, of, uh, in the degradation process. Also, uh, we, we have a, a, a work, we, we have worked on a, a modification of some membranes uh, on some ultrafiltration ultra membranes uh, used to remove uh, some chromium, some arsenic and boron from water. And uh, using uh, these uh, biopolymers and also uh, uh, some uh, polymerization techniques, we have obtained a good membranes with good behavior. And uh, in the next step, we will use uh, in, 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 a, in a pilot scale uh, uh, level, uh, this kind of uh, new material. Well, finally, this is the list of publication of our site. This is a publication of this year uh, with topics uh, related to the, the project, uh, preparation of the uh, polymers and biopolymers, materials, also membranes to uh, separate and concentrate species, and also preparation and characterization on some uh, polymer metal nanocomposites. And this is uh, some joint publications. And, and also the, the, the list of the uh, uh, students involved in the project. We have uh, three new PhD students. Uh, one of them is working in, in lignin uh, in chemical modification of lignin, and two of them are the material uh, program in PhD. So 
uh, and also we have a, a one a bachelor student involved in, in the ultrafiltration of pollutants using these modified membranes. So thank you very much for uh, your attention. Thank you. Uh, now we will go to uh, Mauricio Zambrano from the University of Frontera and Dr. Yang Bochen from San Yat Sen University. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, good morning or uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mauricio Sambrano Bierini, and I'm the PI of the Chilean team of this project. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Professor Yang Boscheng, the PI of the Chinese team from the Sun Yat Sen uh, University in China, and my national uh, collaborators, Ivo Fustos, Camila Alvarez Garretón, Mauricio Galleguillos, Juan Pablo Basier, Pilar Barria, and uh, Daniela Manusevich. This project is within the area of water resources management. The main challenges that we have faced in the two years of the execution of this project was, uh, of course, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we couldn't carry out a kickoff meeting that was planned for the first year. So at this moment, we don't meet in person with the Chinese team. How we have cooperated then? Uh, basically, two online conferences between Chinese and Chilean teams and a weekly or monthly meetings among the Chilean team uh, members. The specific objectives of this project were first one uh, related to the international collaboration uh, between Chile and China. The second one was to develop a comprehensive hydrological simulation framework to simulate key hydrological processes in Chinese and Chilean catchments. The third objective was to better understand the main drivers of hydrological change. Uh, during this century. The fourth objective was to better understand the joint impact of climate and land use and land cover change and dam operation on water resources. And finally, uh, was to identify nature-based and generalized recommendations for water resources management in the pilot case studies. Uh, the Chilean project has four very different case studies. The first one is the Petorca River Basin that, as you can see in this figure, is located in the northern part of Santiago, that is here, uh, the capital city of Chile. Uh, this catchment is characterized by intensive agricultural use and lack of drinking water for rural communities. The second catchment is the Mapocho River Basin, located in the eastern side of Santiago. Uh, this catchment is an important source of drinking water for the major city of Santiago and all the metropolitan region of Chile, uh, and has experienced a decrease in snow cover during the last decades. The third case study is the Cauquenes River Basin, which uh, has experienced a replacement of native forests by exotic forest plantation during the last decades. And finally, uh, the Trancura River Basin that is located in the Araucanía region of Chile, where damaging flood events uh, usually happen during the winter season. During the two years of this project, uh, we have mainly focused on uh, developing and collecting uh, data uh, in order to provide a robust assessment of the key uh, uh, hydrological response during the last uh, decades. The work package two uh, collaborated in the development of the gridded product historical land cover mapping, uh, which uh, at this moment has a land cover maps for six specific years within the historical period 1990-2020 and uh, also uh, for the future period uh, has implemented a clue model to allow the spatial simulation of land use changes in the four pilot uh, 
uh, case studies. At this moment, we are analyzing uh, the possibility of implementing CI markup for Chilean catchments with collaboration of the Chinese partner. The work package three is related to climate, and so far we have managed to collect the CR2 MET version 2.5 uh, gridded climate data with daily maps of precipitation, maximum air temperature, and minimum air temperature with a five kilometer spatial resolution for the historical period 1979-2020. And uh, regarding future uh, scenarios, so far we have uh, used two semip 6 GCMs to explore the impact of using high and super high resolution climate models on the future evolution of water resources on the Trancura catchment. We have used quantile delta mapping for bias correcting the raw climate data and more GCMs are on, uh, being collected at this moment. The work package four is related to water resources simulation in the pilot case studies. And uh, so far we managed to uh, set up 15 new rain gauges in the four uh, Chilean case studies. We have implemented a new gridded soil type product compatible with the new SWAT plus hydrological model. Uh, at this moment, we also have SWAT Plus running with land cover variable in time in the four Chilean uh, case studies. And we are carrying out exploratory analysis of some state of the art grid data of precipitation, potential evapotranspiration, actual evapotranspiration, soil moisture, and total water storage. And finally, we have developed a multi platform, multi objective calibration algorithm to be used with both SWAT Plus and the uh, Liu Qi model of the Chinese partner. Here you have some numbers of the students that have been part of the project and uh, the dissemination at the national and international uh, scale. And uh, the ongoing international collaboration will be presented by Dr. Yan Cheng in the next five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Yan Bocheng, then. We can see your presentation. Please go ahead. Dr. Yang Bochen. We cannot hear you, Dr. Yang Bo. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Chen Lao Shi. So no, can you hear me, right? Oh, okay. Now, yes. Uh, okay, so dear colleagues, good morning and good evening. So I'm Yang Bo Chen from Shenyasen University. So it's my pleasure to give you a, a short summary to our works for the past two years and also something I'm going to do in the next two years. Okay, for well, first, I will give you some ideas about the Chinese pilot studies. So the Chinese pilot study is a Pearl River Basin in Southern China here with about half a million square kilometers. So, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a really, really big uh, watershed, but for our studies, we have some focusing areas. So for the East, East River Basin, it is still very big. It's uh, 35,000 square kilometers. Uh, there is three very big reservoirs. We will uh, study the impact of the reservoirs operation on the flooding and the drought. And uh, for another focusing area, it is uh, Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Great Bay areas. It's a regional scale. So it's also very big, 56,000 square kilometers. So this area is uh, rapid urbanization. So, and uh, uh, the urbanization has a very big impact on the floodings. So for the past two years, we have, we have done something and uh, have some achievements. So, uh, I will give you some ideas. So first, we have detected the uh, look how look change in the past uh, 30 years. So for the East River Basin uh, from 1990 to 2018, 
uh, we detect the land cover change for the Coral River Basin and published an article. And for the GBA areas from 1987 to 2015, we estimate the land cover land yield change by the satellite remote sensing images. And we find this areas is uh, uh, the very biggest, I think, is, uh, we find the very biggest urbanization areas in the world, not only in China. And also, we have uh, predict the, the land yield land cover change in the East River Basin and the Dongguan City in 20 and 50s. This is the picture. And also, we detect the river channel change of Buji Creek in Shenzhen City from 1987 to 2015. So we published one article uh, for this result. So then we uh, improved the Liu Shihe model. So the Liu Shihe model is a physically based distributed hydrogenotic model proposed mainly for hedgement from process simulation and prediction uh, proposed by my group. So in this study for the past two years, we have improved the model and uh, uh, make it to be able to simulate the reservoir operation and the hydrological process impact by the urbanization. So after this uh, improvement, we uh, test, we test this model in uh, eight Chinese reservoirs all over, the, all over China. And uh, we found the result is very, very satisfactory in every reservoir it runs very well. And we published five articles, three in Chinese, two in English. So uh, with the logical model, we simulate uh, the impact of reservoir operation on floodings. So many, no, we have done it in uh, Xinfengjiang Reservoir, the biggest reservoir in the uh, East River. So, and we found uh, some very uh, significant uh, result, you, you know. Uh, the reservoir operation uh, largely impacts the floodings for, the, for these reservoirs and this, to show you the result and we summarize the effect in those three aspects and define the index to uh, numerically uh, evaluate this in, its impact. And we, we just finished an uh, article and uh, submit to Journal of Hydrology, you know, it is under review. Then we simulate the impact of urbanization on flooding also by using the Liu Shiko model. So here we simulate eight highly urbanized creeks in the GBA areas in three cities with, with totally eight highly urbanized creeks. And for this study, we, we found some very interesting results. Uh, here you see the, the curves. So this is uh, the effect of the urbanization on the flooding. We have not found this kind of curves in, in the current literature. So it's very, very interesting. So we just uh, read a, a paper and we submit to uh, Juner. Also, we have some uh, international collaboration, even though we, have, we haven't met in person. So we have used the logical model to set up the model structure in three Chilean uh, hedgement, the Pitora River and, and, and others. And uh, for the next years, we will simulate the flooding first in uh, in Chancora River Basin and uh, uh, optimize the model parameters and hopefully it could be used for flood forecasting by our Chini partners. Then we will simulate other, uh, other three uh, watershed also. So th let's just summarize, a brief summarize to our works for the past two years. And we have some plans for the next two years. So I just follow uh, SOs. For the first uh, foot, foot uh, SOs, we have planned several uh, events. I think we, we think it is very important. We will try to visit each other, I, I think maybe uh, in end of this year or early next year. And uh, we, we have planned a trip to, 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 to Chile and uh, our uh, Chile partners also uh, planned a trip to us in next year. And we are uh, uh, planned a joint workshop uh, online or offline, if it can be done in Chile online, uh, offline, then we, uh, with the possible participation of experts from
Oops. Uh, I think we lost him. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as I understood, this is kind of uh, ending slides. Yes, this is yes. the last two slides. Yeah. So uh, we um, we move to our last but not least presentation uh, project. Uh, I invite uh, Dr. Jenny Vlamy from Scientific and Cultural Foundation Bioscience and Dr. Jung Song San, Shanghai Advanced Research Institute from Chinese Academy of Science. Okay. Um, let me connect, uh, put my presentation to share, please. Um, let's see. Um, wait a second, please. Mm. No problem. Yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. Yes. Yes, it is. So, so good evening and good morning to all colleagues that are present um, for this last presentation. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I would be presenting some of the results that we have been uh, developing with my colleague, Dr. Jun Song Sang, uh, for the project uh, entitled Biological Removal of Phenolic Derivatives from Contaminated Wastewater Effluents from Pharmaceutical, Chemical, and Textile Industry. My name is Jenny Blamey, and I am the co PI along with uh, Professor San for this project. So we have organized the presentation in the following context, introduction, preparation, progress, summary and plan and prospects for it. To contextualize the work we have um, addressing, the problem that we want to tackle is how do we solve contaminated wastewater with phenolic derivatives, recalcitrant synthetic dyes and antibiotics, as well as poly aromatic hydrocarbons, how we can try to decontaminate this type of uh, pollutant. So the solution we have proposed is a biological one that involves the biological removal of these highly contaminated compounds through the specific use of a thermophilic enzyme called lacase, which has a broad spectrum of substrate acceptance. On the right side, lower part of this uh, um, uh, slide, what we have in blue is the uh, work that has been involved by the Chilean team on in red, the uh, work uh, done by the uh, Chinese research team. We Chileans have been involved in the isolation of the enzyme, characterization of it, catalytic properties and the effect of this enzyme on the degradation of pollutants. Meanwhile, the group of my colleague is, has been involved in the production, stability, and enzyme engineering of, of the enzyme. So through the preparation of the project collaboration, both teams, Chilean and Chinese, we work on the generation of recombinant version of this enzyme. The Chilean team was focused on the recombinant lacase enzyme in Echerichia coli, one of the microorganisms that we could put the gene on it and see if it works. And uh, our colleagues group was working on the Bacillus subtilis, um, subtilis uh, recombinant version of the enzyme. On the upper part in the left side of the, of the presentation, what we have is the, this gel, SDS gel, that shows the molecular mass of the recombinant lacase obtained in a functional way. And here we show the optimal temperature for the enzyme and the range of pH where the enzyme can work. On the, on the right side, similar version for the Bacillus subtilis and in the upper part is the map construction of how our Chinese colleagues uh, regenerate the recombinant version. On the lower part in blue, what we have is the work we have done as Chilean team, purification and property identification of enzyme, evaluation of the lacase biodegradation of phenolic derivatives, which include dye stuff, antibiotics, and polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And on the Chinese uh, research team, bacillus engineering, secretive expression of the enzyme, and biofilm display expression. So just to go into the results we have obtained, the first result was working on these different dye staff to demonstrate the rapid degradation and decoloration 
of the um, different dyes when we are they are exposed to our enzyme. So we selected several trias, trimet, triaryl methane dyes, some aso dyes and some anthroquinonic dyes. And what you see in this experiment is that these are groups of experiments that uh, shows that after 30 minutes at 40 degrees C, when we combine the dye with a redox mediator, which improves the activity of our lacase and lacase, you see total degradation and decoloration of every one of the dyes we have um, treated with our lacase. Just this is shown in the last row of every group of experiments. If we move ahead and then look at the effect of antibiotics, uh, degradation of antibiotics and degradation of polyaromatic hydrocarbons on the upper part of the slide, what we can see is that when we have a loan, a plate that contains a pathogenic organism and we and also in this disc, we have presented some antibiotics, six, six different type of antibiotics, which include three tetracycline type of antibiotics, two beta-lactamic ones and fluoroquinolone. We see that when we combine the enzyme with a redox mediator and uh, in the plate and the pathogenics uh, organisms, the enzyme is capable of degrade the antibiotic even uh, 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 for more, for even four of them uh, effectively, highly effectively. On the lower part in the left side of the, of, the, of the slide, we see also a graph, a quantification of the biodegradation working when the enzyme is working on tetracycline type of, um, type of antibiotics after two hours of 40 degrees being exposed these antibiotics the lacase in the presence of uh, these redox mediators is able to even degrade up to 60 percent of the antibiotic when the ph is five on the right side of the slide what we have is now the treatment of the polyaromatic poly, uh, hydrocarbons with the lacase and a mediator. And we see this is an, an ongoing experiment right now yes. that when we have um, uh, exposed this um, PAH for 30 degrees, uh, for seven days at 30 degrees, we start observing the uh, uh, slow degradation of these compounds. I have to mention that these are highly recalcitrant. So the time for degrading them is even longer than what we have seen in antibiotics. With that, I would like to pass to uh, the word to my colleague, Yu Song Sang, for the next uh, slide. Yu Song. Okay. So next slide, please. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, this is Jinsung San uh, from Shanghai Advanced Research Institute, and uh, by following uh, Dr. Blame's excellent job, uh, uh, actually uh, some of my job has been introduced by uh, uh, Jenny, uh, Dr. Blame, and uh, our work uh, is closely uh, related. And uh, so first uh, we carried out the secretive expression of lacase in bacillus, and uh, then uh, as shown uh, on the uh, on top uh, left side, uh, we performed engineering uh, in the bacillus and uh, uh, deletion of bacillus genes were found to be uh, helpful uh, to form um, biofilm uh, more easily. And we use the biofilm uh, system to express a lacase and uh, we check the activity. As shown on the right side, uh, we see that the uh, lacase uh, formed on the biofilm is still active. And then the next, uh, we test the ability uh, of the uh, biofilm displayed uh, lacase uh, of its activity to degrade the, the, the phenol. Uh, so, however, uh, we can see that on the lower part on the right side, and we can see that the uh, enzyme on the biofilm is much weaker than the enzyme. So, next slide, please. So, uh, next slide, please. So can you, uh, next slide, please. It's on. 
is on the next slide, Jun Song. Uh, yeah, okay, got it, okay. So uh, I think the problem, I, I have, I don't know, maybe I have some trouble in the internet. So, okay, so we ask ourselves, why don't we fix the enzyme to some supporting materials that might be helpful for the enzyme to survive in the harsh condition and increase its activity. So we assemble the PVDF membrane enzyme reaction uh, reactor and compare the activity of the immobilized enzyme with soluble protein. As seen here, uh, the stability of the activity and the stability and the activity of the uh, membrane immobilized enzyme is much higher than those soluble protein during treatment of either uh, phenol or chlorum phenol. So next slide, please. It's on. Yeah. Uh, so can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I think, yeah, I can see some uh, in a pause. I thought that there might be some trouble. Okay, uh, I'll go uh, uh, further. So, uh, as 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 a summary, actually, uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we have accomplished some uh, achievement during the past two years. Uh, so, Dr. Blames Group has successfully overexpressed and the FNT uh, lacase in the E. coli and the character characterize its enzymatic property, including the rapid uh, uh, rapid uh, by decolorization and uh, by degradation of uh, different antibiotics and the partial removal of pH rate. Uh, our team has constructed by film uh, display uh, expression system in bacillus and demonstrated that the lacase is active in the biofilm, but the activity doesn't meet the industrial need. So we then construct the PVDF uh, hollow fiber membrane enzyme reactor. And that uh, was shown to be uh, effectively bound, uh, bound to the enzyme and can increase the enzyme's tolerance and uh, its degradation ability, ability to the phenol chemicals. So uh, next slide, please. Please on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we have... Uh, Actually, so uh, uh, we have previously proposed uh, to carry out uh, the bioremediation uh, to uh, some recalcitrant chemicals uh, uh, by joint collaboration in three steps, as, as, as shown here. So uh, the first, uh, at first, uh, the enzyme uh, should be uh, recombinantly produced, and then they will be evaluated in the treatment of those uh, pollutants. And also uh, the last step we haven't, we haven't finished yet, we need to improve the efficiency of the bioremediation uh, uh, system and apply for the practical uh, scale of treatment. Up to now, we have almost accomplished the two steps. And uh, uh, next slide, uh, next slide, please. So still, we need to work more jointly to improve the lacase-based uh, bioremediation system. Uh, at first, we need, we need to test more natural organic compounds as an electronic immediate to improve the catalytic activity of the lacase. And then the enzyme's pH stability and the spectrum uh, can also be improved by enzyme engineer. After that, we want to test a more physical immobilization system, such as cellulosic membrane to increase the efficiency of the enzyme. And we need to use the biosystem to test its degradation ability on some more uh, pollutants. Also, we look forward to have an industrial partner join us so we can further develop and improve the biotechnology in practical application. So next slide, please. Yeah, so we have accomplished uh, uh, four papers and uh, by our joint uh, efforts, that's, that's that are related to the project during the past two years. Uh, so next slide, please. So uh, be before closing uh, this presentation, we want to thank the support, support from the Chile and the Chinese administrative department, as well as our uh, group members uh, uh, in Dr. Blamey's Institute and, uh, and, and my lab. And, uh, uh, also, uh, uh, we want to thank for uh, all for your uh, patience and attendance in, in, uh, to hear our uh, presentation. So thank you. That's all for us. Thanks. Yeah. 
thank you very much. Uh, we were supposed to have a 40 minutes good discussion, but um, I understand that the projects are very big. We, the projects are for four years duration. The research you have been done is a great, uh, a great deal and uh, was really impressed. So we will shorten this time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm very sorry. Uh, we will have 10 minutes discussion for the questions and uh, answers so you can please be brief um two minutes one minute maximum your intervention for the questions or clarifications you can express uh, what challenges you have had um during this time or what you have uh, what opportunities this uh, brought to you uh, so um any hands so any uh, expressions, uh, someone wants to ask questions, someone clarify something, or um, please go ahead. So, uh, actually, I think the, uh, the, the, the biggest issue I want to ask is, so in our project, we say, you know, we will need to travel to Chile and the, you know, the, 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 the scientific come to China, but in, in, in Brendan's situation, how can that be fulfilled or how can be, you know, accomplished for in our project? The, the international traveling. I don't know, someone there to respond this? Or you... Uh, uh, someone wants to okay. offer their solution? Okay. I, I think the cooperation project is very uh, effective for both our country's science and technology development. For for example, uh, in in high mountain area in China is Himalaya, and also in Chao is Andes. And I think in a future time in Andes and Himalaya, there are a lot of gloves has this. Uh, uh, very important and very attractive. So we we, we, search, uh, we wonder if possible to next step, uh, push the forward this kinds of cooperation research again. Thank you. Mm. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Jenny? Yeah, I just want to emphasize what Jun Song, uh, a colleague, have said that we have had problems really to to uh, get in touch uh, face to face uh, for him to travel to Chile and for us to go to China, particularly because we just enter into development of the of the project. Um, during pandemic and we are still unable to do it. So he was asking, is there any way we can do it? So for now we are doing just um, <laughs> um, uh, via some uh, uh, connectivity. No, there is no way for us to get together. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I thought that someone would uh, but, uh, it, but I can address it a little bit. Uh, I, uh, unfortunately, pandemic uh, um, was was a huge surprise for everyone uh, so it's a global pandemic and uh, if uh, nowadays for example the travel to chile is open you can come to chile with uh, your negative test with a certificate of your vaccination i am not sure that the china is open so maybe you can plan together and see whether you can come to chile and have uh, your meeting here within your project or uh, you can meet in some uh, neutral territory by uh, using, I'm not sure the, the, the big fund, the big chunk of money from projects was used for travel because China is uh, far away uh, from Chile. And so the, unfortunately, we don't have a solution now. Uh, it's something that we didn't expect, but if some other projects can, um, can give the experience of how they were dealt with it apart from virtual meetings would be great. Uh, Mr. Zhou, uh, I, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Well, I, I do know that people are 
in very strong need for international travel, but uh, because of uh, uh, the pandemic, which lasts um, about three years and uh, in different places have a different situation in the restrictions uh, on the international travel. And uh, from what I know that uh, there are not too many international flights available from, uh, let's say, Beijing, Shanghai to other uh, big cities uh, in other countries. So perhaps people have to wait for some time uh, uh, until the uh, total ease of the uh, restriction on the uh, international travel. And also I know that uh, uh, it's quite understandable that people working in, uh, uh, for instance, uh, mild slides or seismology and the disastrous event uh, investigation are really in need of a failed investigation all the time. And uh, people have to care, uh, for instance, people have to take care of uh, the uh, failed uh, uh, variety of sensors. Uh, and so, so, so it's quite understandable. People really need to travel a lot. But the, perhaps uh, we have to be patient uh, for, uh, for the day to come. And I also know that uh, uh, some international conferences are now uh, being planned as a physical uh, event. Uh, but I actually, uh, from uh, the science community in China, I don't see too many Chinese researchers are going to attend those physical meetings. And uh, uh, so uh, I also know that from the presentation by uh, uh, 12 pair of uh, uh, researchers today, and that they actually, uh, uh, even though the, uh, uh, the restrictions of uh, pandemic give a lot of uh, negative impact on their research, but they have been still uh, doing a lot of things uh, uh, via, let's say, virtual meeting on the internet and so on. Uh, and they uh, in fact are going well uh, in line with the goal they have set before the start of the, uh, of the bilateral uh, joint uh, research. So what I want to express that uh, I would like to thank all the researchers uh, from both sides uh, for their uh, hardworking and, and, and the joint effort to make the research going well. And also perhaps we have to wait for some time until the situation is got improved. So the international travel will be in availability. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zhou. Um, if no other questions, comments. Uh, uh, okay, Mauricio, please go ahead. <coughs> I have a comment. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, for those projects that started just in 2020 when the pandemic uh, started, it's very different the situation from the projects that started one year uh, before where they had the possibility to actually meet in person. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, at least what we are going to, we, our project is in the same situation that Diana uh, uh, Jenny Blamey, uh, mm -hmm. Dan Diane Blamey, and we are trying to organize a joint workshop at the end of this year here in Chile because so far it seems that Chile is safer than China, at least in this moment. And uh, I wanted to ask if uh, we actually managed to uh, organize such a meeting. Can we count with the support of ANID and National Science Foundation uh, of China, probably to expand the invitation to some other projects that can participate in this uh, workshop? Of course, we can, uh, uh, I will talk for ANID, we can expand, uh, invite other projects. The idea of this event is also to so you, each of you know what other projects are doing. So actually you can, uh, you can think maybe there is another uh, cooperation, maybe two projects can think about some other yeah. cooperation in the future. Yeah. And, uh, and this, is, this is the idea of that. So you, all of you know what is going on. Uh, uh, there is only one project in this specific area of chemistry of uh, 
of uh, renewable energy, but maybe also they can also fit within other, um, some other cooperations. And um, um, I don't know, uh, I just want to, I sent all of you a link about uh, uh, GRC call that we are going to open soon from Chile on sustainable development goals. Maybe you can also expand this and see and uh, I see that, uh, yeah, Mauricio, you still have, may have one year more for, for your meeting, but not uh, um, a project from 2018 call. So um, and if someone, if there is some other comments, uh, uh, please let me know. If no, I would like to invite um, a representative, first secretary from the embassy of the Republic of China in, in Chile. Uh, so Shan Li, she is in charge of science and technology to give her some words. Uh, so Shan, please. Thank you, Sharabia. On behalf of um, Chinese Embassy in Chile, I would appreciate the great efforts jointly pursued by NSFC and the ANID as to successfully organize today's workshop. In this workshop, both Chinese and Chilean scientific partners presented their impressive ongoing achievement through 12 projects in three important areas of natural disasters, water resources management, and renewable energy. All these teamworks and their wonderful results are very significant for basic research solutions to many increasing climate change challenges, not only between China and Chile, but also all over the world. I do wish this workshop be a new beginning for our future fruitful science, technology, innovation cooperation between China and Chile. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, last but not least, I would like to invite uh, my colleague from uh, Chief of the Department of Application Calls Management and Monitoring from the Subdirection for Network Strategy and Knowledge from AOFANIC, uh, Patricio Spinoza. Uh, this department is also in charge of the calls and the uh, my colleagues Ingrid and Ricardo are from the department. I would like to thank them as well. So Patricio, please, uh, the last word for, for closing remarks uh, from Anit. The floor is yours. Thank you, Charabilla. Uh, good morning to all of you. On behalf of the National Research and Development Agency, it's National Director Alejandra Pizarro, and the Deputy Director Patricia Muñoz, we would like to convey our most cordial greetings to all those present, especially to uh, our counterpart from NS NSFC, Mr. Sou Liao, uh, General Director of Bureau of International Cooperation, Mrs. Jing Chen, Bureau of International Cooperation, other colleagues, of course, of NSFC, to the Embassy of the Republic of China in Chile, Mrs. Xiaoxian Li, First Secretary in Science and Technology, Mrs. Xiao Su, uh, Assistant for the First Secretary, uh, to all the Chinese and Chilean researchers, and of course, uh, to all the ANID staff. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to extend on behalf of all ANID our deepest condolences to the family, colleagues, students, friends, and relatives of Dr. Jorge Pessoa, principal research of the project PAA um, 180009 uh, of the University of Concepcion. Uh, please, um, Dr. Felipe Lamas, please receive the, our uh, deepest condolence to the old team of, uh, from ANID. The first agreement in STI between government uh, of Chile and China was signed in uh, 1980. Since then, there are many agreements signed between China and Chile related to STI area. Only ANIR has 14 agreements. 
since 2011, ANID has uh, progressively increased both instrument and funding in order to uh, further foster science and technology cooperation between Chile and China. One of the examples of the successful, uh, successful cooperation with China and, and, is, uh, and STI is the creation of Chinese Academy of Science South America Center uh, for Astronomy, CASACA, in Chile in uh, 2013. And of course, uh, uh, and joint calls uh, between CAS, uh, CAS uh, and it in postdoctoral position uh, in astronomy. Uh, the next call will be open shortly, so please stay tuned to our website and, and mailing. Cooperation uh, with National Natural Science Foundation of China, NSFC, is another example of successful, successful pardon, uh, cooperation with China. Uh, during um, 2016 and 2017, ANID and NSFC jointly carry out two workshops in Chile on natural disaster with the presence of, uh, of 25 Chinese ex uh, experts. These, work, these uh, workshops generate the links between research of uh, China and Chile for the joint application calls in uh, 2018 in the topic where four projects were selected. Then ANID and NSFC organized joint workshops on water resource, resource management in 2018 in Chile with the presence uh, 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 of the 19 experts from China. And um, in um, 19, um, pardon, in 19, um, uh, 1990, of, I'm so sorry, in 1990 on chemistry of renewable energy and Beijing with the presence of five Chilean experts. The joint call in both areas was conducted in 1990 with eight projects selected for the funding. Um, and of course, uh, I would like to highlight the important number of publication and patents derived from the execution of the proposal. In the same line, I would like to highlight the important participation of undergraduate and graduate, uh, graduate, graduate, I'm so sorry, students who have participated in the projects and who are with us today in these workshops. Joint call with NSFC are the first call on research projects uh, with China and with Asia. So the result of the research is important to strengthen cooperation between two countries in STI. Mix commission between Chile and China in STI, it's planned to be organized this year in Santiago, and we hope, of course, to increase our cooperation further. Finally, I would like to thank everyone to have participated in this workshop, uh, the research teams, the technical and administrative teams of NSFC, the Embassy of China at Chile, and of course, to the all ANID staff. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope you have a, a good rest of the day. Please stay tuned for uh, our new calls, check our web, uh, website and of course of the mailing list. Thank you so much, see you soon. Thank you, Patricio. Uh, so thank you very much again uh, on behalf of everyone. And uh, um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask to send this to us and also don't forget to send your presentations <laughs> and uh, uh, good luck in doing in finishing your projects and uh, congratulations to all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 See you, everyone. Bye to all. Bye. -bye. <laughs> 多谢使馆的两位两位一位参赞还有另外一位同志多谢呃 thank you thank you uh Sharapia for organizing and uh, uh, as a mentor and you did a very good job I uh, hope to see you uh, next time thank you thank you for you to be able to join us 谢谢董事长多谢李先生还有还有还有另外一位同志哎朱超朱超啊谢谢朱超多谢多谢多谢支持 多谢支持，呃，多我一起努力，有什么？有什么需要我？还会继续下去的，很好，有你们的支持，我们一定有信心把这个两个机构的合作继续做下去。好的，再见。好，再见，拜拜。Goodbye, everyone. Bye bye.
Arabia. Have a good day. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Patricio. Thank you. Thank you. Saludos. <laughs> Gracias. Bye bye. Take care. Adiós. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye, Charapilla. Bye. Bye. Bye, Charapilla. Bye. Bye. Gracias por todo. Gracias a todos. Gracias, gracias. Chao, profesora, habla México. Chao, chao. Gracias, chao, gusto verla. Chao, chao. Chao, chao. No, 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 no,